Well, good evening, everybody. Let me uh, make sure we're clicked on here. Can you hear me? Okay, now can you hear me? All right. Well, welcome to Battle Creek. Um, uh, for those who are watching, it's standing room only or sitting room only. Thank you for being a part. Thank you for being willing to sit around the edges. I really appreciate that. And uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of this. Uh, Kevin already told me we're coming back, so uh, he's, <laughs> um, we, we won't be in here, <laughs> but, but if, if, you are, uh, if you have a large building that seats 500, come and see me afterwards, and uh, we had to obviously cut it off uh, even at this the best we could, and so there would have been three, four times as many people here, so thank you. Thank you for coming. Do we have any fellowship, Warrior Fellowship host here? Host. Okay, great. Where are you, ma'am? East Point, Michigan. East Point, Michigan, yes. Pontiac, Michigan. Pontiac, you, okay, Pontiac. No Vine. No Vine, yes, ma'am? Grand, Grand, Grand Rapids, okay. Livonia. Livonia. Wyoming, Michigan. Wyoming, Michigan. Jackson. Jackson, and you're all hosts. You're all hosts. Wow. Sir? Battle Creek. Battle Creek. So you have a fellowship here. Anybody else here in Battle Creek with a fellowship? Sir, could you come and see me afterwards? I'd really appreciate that. So, wow, let's give all these fellowship hosts a hand. And if you're, if you're wondering what a fellowship is, uh, Warrior Fellowship, it's something that Kevin had his heart, uh, on his heart to do literally since 1980. It's been on his heart that every, uh, to, to do fellowships. But, but now that we have students, they are hosting these fellowships all over the world. I mean, you just saw how many are here, representing here in Michigan. And it's a Bible study. It's an outreach. It's reaching the community. It's a food pantry. It's uh, the presence of God. It's so awesome. And so if you want to be a part, you saw all these hands go up. You may have heard your city be called out. And uh, those who are watching online, I'm just telling you, the, the, we were pre pleasantly surprised last night in Hershey, Pennsylvania, how many hosts are there. So thank you for doing it. I want, I want to just really encourage you to plug into a Warrior Fellowship and uh, see what God will do. Uh, I'm just telling you, it's, it's really amazing. So um, let me give you a few announcements. And um, come on through, ma'am. You're all right. Are you I am. And so are you now. <laughs> Somebody make sure we find her a seat, though, okay? Okay. You are, okay. All right. Well, let me give you a few announcements. This is our last meeting on this leg that Kevin felt on his heart to do. And this is, it's been off the charts, what's been happening in all these places. And so uh, let me give you a few announcements. Uh, the next meeting that we're going to have is going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona on April 13th. And then we're going to be in Seattle, Washington in April. This is more, of course, for the people watching online. Uh, then we're going to be in Honolulu, Hawaii. And um, uh, Maui, Hawaii as well. We have a powerful outreach there. Tulsa, Oklahoma in May. Uh, Branson, Missouri in May as well. Um, close to you guys, a little closer. Pennsylvania, we're going to have a whole spirit school in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. And then Dallas, Fort Worth, Nashville, Tennessee. Waupon, we have the pastors from Waupon here. Uh, in Wisconsin, uh, Dalton, Georgia. And then we're in October, we have a powerful uh, uh, meetings in uh, Europe. We're going to be going to uh, Germany uh, and then, uh, excuse me, Switzerland and then South Africa and then Germany. So be praying for Kevin and the team for that. It's going to be, it's off the charts. These warrior fellowships, literally, if you look at a map of Germany, the fellowships uh, surround the entire country of Germany. Uh, they're in all points around Germany. So we're really excited about that. And, so many wonderful things are happening there. Amen. So you'll hear a little bit more from Pastor Chris and Pastor Mike, but you know, I want to encourage you, plug in. Uh, plug into this ministry. Obviously, you wouldn't be here if you weren't plugging into a certain extent, but thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part. And so right now, we're going to receive an offering. So if our lovely ushers would uh, come up and just stand here for a moment, I want to make one more announcement before you start passing the bucket. Uh, Kevin wanted to uh, bless you all uh, with, uh, we have... Uh, people have been uh, visiting the book table in all these cities, so 
Uh, there, all, the, all the books are gone, unfortunately. So we didn't bring any books, but you can find them on Amazon or Kevin's website, of course. But we did bring the CDs. Uh, I think we have a, a smattering of most all of them. And uh, I want to show you two real quick. Uh, the brand new one was live in Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville, Florida, very powerful. And then this one right here, we play this. Yes, what did I say? It's music. Yeah. yeah. Worship. Worship, music, <laughs> presence of God, glory. Uh, this one right here, altar fire, we play this in our healing room at our church 24-7. And I'm telling you, uh, you need to get one of these CDs, and, and I'm telling you, you'll, you'll feel the presence of God. It's prophetic worship, and uh, the thing about listening to the CDs is once you plug it in, you, you hear the music, you hear the words, you, it feels like it was a now word for you. You just needed to hear that. So anyway, I want to make mention of that over there. So thank you for being a part, and thank you for uh, giving in the offering. And like we said last night, like uh, Kevin has taught us, if, you, if you're not going to basically uh, be hilarious in your giving tonight, uh, cheerful, and like roll around the floor, that's how excited you are about giving then don't bother because God loves a cheerful giver. And he already said he's coming back, whether you give or not, in the offering. But thank you for giving. Thank you for sowing. We always want to give everybody opportunity to sow into the ministry because we believe that's a God principle. Amen. If you want to give online, you can. Uh, there's a text to give number on there. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here in Battle Creek. to Lord, just to... Um, be a part of what you're doing on the earth and through this ministry, Lord. I thank you that this ministry is literally touching nations, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that even Battle Creek and Michigan and all these fellowship hosts will never be the same again, Lord. We thank you for waves of glory to sweep through this state. Lord, we bless you and worship you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, ushers. All right. Well, I don't know about you, but I can already feel the fire of God already. And I feel like this is kind of like the day of Pentecost where everybody was in a room, nice and squished together, and then the fire came. All right. So the fire's already here. So get ready. All right. Um, listen, I, my name is Pastor Chris, but I, I help out with the outreach, the books, the food pantry. And I just want to talk to you for a few uh, moments just about what we're doing at our Warrior Fellowship uh, we do a little bit of everything, but two things I really love to highlight. Um, here recently, we have a lady that bakes cookies uh, in our church, and she said, hey, I have a great idea. Why don't I make a bunch of cookies and uh, put stickers of scriptures in your church card on there, and you can give them out to the police department and the fire department and the nurses. So uh, my wife helps out with the first responders, and she was able to do that, and the, they were so uh, blessed by that. Uh, these nurses, you know, work all day and they go into the break room and there's a cookie. Could you imagine the nurse coming in and they've been dealing with people all day and masks and all this stuff. And they go into the break room and it says, uh, you are loved by God. You know, and they eat the cookie and it says, you're loved by God. You know, Antioch Warrior Fellowship. So that's something that you can do. Another thing that we do that's very uh, impactful is on Friday nights, we go out and we help and feed the homeless. And uh, we got a couple wagons off Amazon. And we take these wagons and we uh, fill them up with uh, hot dogs, warm hot dogs and aluminum foil. And we get blankets. You've heard Kevin and Kathy talk about get blankets. Uh, we get hand warmers. We get all these kind of things. And then we just take this wagon to an area and we just start rolling with the wagon. Um, and they're like, what's going on? And people will come up and, and we'll say, we're just sharing the love of God. We're sharing uh, what Jesus has done in our life. And you get these meals, uh, these, these hot dogs. And the homeless are like, can you please pray for me? We'll say, yes, we pray for them. And God is touching these people. And there's so many stories. But God is alive. Amen? Amen. And God is moving. And I feel the fire. And I know there's some uh, uh, warrior fellowships here. And there's some students here. And as I walked up here, I just saw, Kevin, I saw this map of the world. And there's just like, there's like these little dots everywhere. And this fire is going from dot to dot, to dot, to dot, and I believe and I know that Warrior Notes is really taking over the world with the fire of God. Everywhere we go, God is touching people. People are being challenged. And listen, Kevin said this, and I borrowed it. I don't steal anymore. I borrowed this. <laughs> the only thing that you can take with you to heaven is souls. The currency in heaven is people, and that's what it's about. And you said something last night, and I borrowed that as well. 
the most supernatural thing we can do on earth is the love, to love people. And that's what Warrior Notes is all about. We want you to, uh, in your Warrior Fellowships or student, we want you to pick out a single mom that you know they're going through a tough time. Maybe after your Warrior Fellowship, you get together, you have your lesson, and you sit down and you pray together and say, Jesus, who are you highlighting around us that we can help? And listen, one more thing and I'm done. And if you want to do this, I encourage you, I love it if you do it. I, I thought of this thing called Warrior Checkout, all right? So you go to the grocery store, you see a, a mom that's uh, doing her, you know, scanning her groceries, and the kids are going crazy, right, all over the buggy, over the, uh, the cart, and you walk up to the mom and say, I don't know how you're doing it. You are a, such an awesome mom. You have all these kids, and you're raising them up. And the Lord wanted me to pay for your groceries today. The Lord put it on my heart to pay for your groceries. Could you imagine what that would do to a single mom? And the little kids are like, what's going on? And the, the mom gets in the car and says, God sent someone us today to us today to pay for our groceries. Could you imagine? So I call that Warrior Checkout. So if anybody does that and you're on Warrior Chat, please do it and put hashtag Warrior Checkout. Pastor Mike. <laughs> Praise God. Well, Battle Creek, we've been waiting. We've been excited to be with you guys because we know we've got some students and we've got some partners here. We know God's taken over Michigan. Isn't he? Oh, yeah. Even all you in the, in the UP, you know, you guys too, right? So how many students and partners do we have here tonight, if you don't mind? Wow. Let me just say thank you. I mean, everywhere we go, we get to meet such incredible people like you guys. And, you know, so many of you have been following Kevin and Kathy, and you've seen what God has done through them. You've seen how they... They were, he was a flight attendant. You've seen how she was a hairdresser, and you've seen how God has done something in their lives. But here's what I know Kevin and Kathy would want you to know, that if God can do that for them, what could God do through you? Because you have to realize that God's into his kids. He's into doing wonderful things. And so their heart and their vision is that you receive an impartation tonight. You know, all of you that watch all the time and you're taking courses, and you're a part of all these things, you guys are family. Like, we're not going anywhere, you're not going anywhere, so let's do this for Jesus, right? That's the, that's our, that's the way we're looking at this, right? So I just want to encourage you with this, because we find so many people all the time that are new to Warrior Notes online or here in the room, and Kevin and Kathy's heart is that we equip the body. You know, that's when you look at the fivefold, they're here to equip right? Not to do any of the other silly things that we've been finding going on. So we have to change the momentum of this, and we're doing it together. But with equipping, it, their heart is to start with your kids. Now, how many of you are parents, and you've got kids? Okay. Me, I've got four, so I know what it's like. And what we need is, is we need to equip them in the identity of Jesus Christ. Like, we know that the world's got all, it's got its agenda, so we've got to teach them how not to be a part of that system. And the way that Kevin and Kathy have started this is homeschooling. Now, you might have seen it before, and we don't have the whole kit. You know, we don't have the truck with us today, but we've got a few of our sample books with us. And if you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, this is the best of the best, okay? We've had our educators, who are some of the best we could find out there, have taken all the state standards and exceeded them in all the books. Matter of fact, we're th we have more in the curriculum kits than most of the others offer. And as we get into some of our other grades, like right now as we're almost done with third grade, some of the books that we're putting out on aviation, and um, just, I can't even tell you everything yet because some of it's got to be published first, but some of the things we're putting out are to get the kids way ahead, okay? Everything is working against them. So we need to be the ones that say, no, God is for you. He's not against you, and this is how we can do it. So I encourage you to take a look at the sample books that we have here. But their vision is this. We start with the kids. We get them on fire for God. We get them excellent, okay? So when everybody's doing their ABCs, they're reading Greek and Hebrew, okay? That's the way we're going to do this. And then from there, they can begin Warrior Notes School of Ministry as early as 13. And I don't know if you guys have been seeing, but we've been starting to do more and more posts because we are finding that there is a huge way that your kids can get way ahead everybody else. And that is that you can start Bible college, you can start your education as early as 13. So right now we have lots of kids that are enrolling in school 
and they're taking Warrior Oak School of Ministry courses, which are fully accredited. Our degrees are the same as any other degree out there in the United States, and it is the real deal. And Kevin and Kathy have made it so affordable I can't even tell you how affordable it is. It, makes, it hurts me to say the numbers, so I'm not going to say the numbers, okay? But this is what we're looking to do. If you have a teenager, we want to get them a scholarship. We want to get them started. And if you're a parent and you hear free, you're all over it, right? Because there's not a lot, especially in the things of the way it's going right now, is free. But Kevin and Kathy have scholarships for the teens, and so we're really looking to get out there and reach them because if we can get them on fire now, if we can get them equipped now, we all know what we've been through, and we want to make sure they don't have to go through all that, right? So their vision is to start the kids as young as possible and to infuse in them the Word of God, the fire of God, the Holy Spirit. Listen, there's nothing more powerful than a five-year-old praying in tongues right? There's nothing more powerful than someone in high school praying in tongues, delivering the word of the Lord, right? We have to raise up these apostles, these prophets, these marketplace leaders. It's our job. And we don't want to get to heaven and Jesus say that we could have did better, right? We don't want that. And I know one thing, we're not going to let that happen, right? Not on our watch, right? That's what we're about. So we want you guys to jump in and be involved. So do we have, just real quick, do we have any alumni here though? Let me ask. Yes, wonderful. We got one right here. We got two. Oh, yeah, right there. We got two alumni with us. We're so excited because I know several here are actually right there or almost ready. We're getting ready for our next graduation in Dalton. So if you're getting close to your associates or your bachelors, I want to encourage you, keep going because we want to see you graduate in Dalton. And then for all of you that don't know, we're about to launch our master's degree and our doctorate degree because we want, it to, we want Christians to be the best educated. We want you to have the fire of God. We want to do it right. And Kevin and Kathy have made it so affordable, it will blow your mind. Okay, it'll blow your mind. So thank you for being a part of everything. Thank you for what you're doing, all you fellowship hosts. And let's do this for Jesus, right? Yeah. All right, Dr. Kevin Zadai. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming. <laughs> we, um, I did my. <laughs> Amen. Thank you all. I love you all. Yeah. But just, you know, we, ha we have to go to Pontiac to get fuel because it's actually really cheap there. So, <laughs> so. Yeah, you might want to talk to the airport about that, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, I, have a, I have a really good subject tonight to talk about. I've been continuing a series on, um, yeah, what is it? I, I'm, I know. <laughs> I just want to, <laughs> if somebody is watching. We, um, we've, been, um, we've been talking about this for, this is a fifth night, and um, the Lord had asked me to, to speak on this. And um, it's, it's uh, quite a strong subject because... No one else is really being able to discern. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why we haven't gotten more information, you know, about the things that are applicable for, for today and our everyday lives, especially with spiritual warfare. And um, it seems like it's just a fantasy in most churches and church groups and, and even in Bible college. It was like a fantasy. I felt that way while sitting in classes. I wasn't feeling like people were really grasping. And yet, um, when I would talk to uh, people in the, that, that are, um, I can't say certain words because they'll, I mean, we're, we're not live because uh, something happened to the internet. The, the devil tripped over a wire or something. So we're, we're going to actually broadcast this, cast this uh, live later. But, um, you know, he's going to pay for that. So, yeah. Yeah. but th the bottom line is this, is um, when you talk to people, off the record, and they they say I, I can tell you this, but then I have to kill you. But I won't just walk away. And um, you you get you get a feel for what's really going on. And this is a lot of people I've talked to, not just a couple, but the intelligence fields they understand a lot of this stuff more than the public does. But it's classified. So a lot of science, a lot of things, observation, things like that. Um, and it's as easy as accessing your own security cameras with infrared and the different spectrums and you will pick up some of this stuff that's on that's just parallel with us 
And so these companies, you know, and if there's intelligence agencies here, because they are, they come watch me and they, people get nervous because they don't want anybody to actually know some of the things that are known because it gives everybody an edge. But you got to remember something that if the security cameras pick up things that are on film and I have eight by 10 glossies of things, well then you know that the manufacturer knows that these things sometimes come on and then you also know that the government knows, right? And so we've all seen these things. What they do is they flood the internet with a bunch of fake stuff so that you don't know what's real and what's, and then you just give up, you know, and you don't even want to watch that. That looks fake. Well, of course it's fake. It's, did you ever notice that ever all the UFO films are, are fuzzy? Yeah. Or, you know, but I've seen things that weren't fuzzy. <laughs> but they don't last long on the internet, you know, maybe at 30 seconds or so. And then, <laughs> and they put up the fuzzy stuff. You know, what, what I'm trying to say is, is I'm not here to talk about UFOs and things like that. I'm here to talk about the other realm and the demonic that you deal with. And the, the manipulation that goes on with the human race from behind the scenes is just, it's so bad. And it was so bad that I didn't want to come back. And I, I told the Lord I wasn't coming back. And that's the very reason. I don't like always say that in any of my books. But this week, I'm just released to just let it all out, hit every hornet's nest I can find, and, and just let people know that it was so bad what I saw on the other side that I did not want to come back and have to deal with this. Why deal with it? You know, when I can just go, to my, go, go be with my father in heaven in his mansion and let him pay my bills, you know, and, you know even though there's no bills up there. That's what I wanted. I wanted. I wanted to stay because I was safe up there. I didn't have to put up with a lot of stuff down here. So what it feels like down here in this, in this realm in comparison is it's like wading through uh, waist high mud constantly. This life is like so slow and so ridiculous and you always feel dirty. But when I was outside my body, when I was with the Lord, I was clean and I, I was able to see clearly, hear clearly. And I knew, I saw, it was more than just the, the realm down here where you have uh, the different senses and the different dimensions that you're de dealing with here. There were multiple dimensions and multiple things, like color had taste. And, co and color was music. So, and music was language. So it's all interwoven in a greater way. What happened when the world fell, the, the realms essentially separated. Not God's realms, they're still there. But what I'm saying is, is that we don't participate in some of the realms now, like, like we used to. We're not aware to be able to, to somehow uh, bring it all together. If it wasn't for the Spirit of God, we, wouldn't, we would just, we'd just be a mess. And then that's why we're a mess. It's because a lot of people don't even believe in the Holy Spirit, you know. And they go to church every week. So it, it's a real mess without the Holy Spirit. Okay, so... What I saw was if you would um, if you would bring everything back pre-flood, even pre-flood, not not even pre-fall, if you would take from the fall until the flood, you would not believe how easy it was to live here as far as the atmosphere and the magnetic field and everything about you. You were stronger. Your body was uh, able to operate at a, at a greater height. And, and you would last longer. You would live longer. This is after the fall. And, and you have to think this way that the realms were really close together and you could communicate between. So your soul didn't fight your spirit. Your body didn't fight your soul or your spirit. You all, we were one. It, they communicated and agreed with each other. And, you know, you didn't have your body and your soul getting together at night while you're sleeping and boat you off the island. You know, they would, there wasn't like this thing going on, but there's a war going on that, that gets into human beings and then they become guided missiles. And that's kind of sums up our Congress and you know, all the leadership, it, all the leadership, it's, it's really they're hijacked by entities. So if you don't accept all this, if you just allow the cartoons in Disneyland and, 
and everything that you grew up with, if you allow that to just make it a fantasy world, um, you know, your Hollywood makes it like it's a fantasy world, then then you're programmed to not be a sharp sword when it comes to discernment because you're programmed to think that that's just another world. You want to break into a song, you know, like on a, on a Disney a Disney movie, you know, you want to break into a song. You make it just kind of like a little drama thing, you know. It just reminds me of Nemo or whatever, and you start singing a song, a silly song, you know. But it's, it's, this is real. So this week with this, this, these momentum breakers, I had to expose what's really going on in your life because, you know, Kathy and I, we have been strong Christians for 43 years. And we've been married 30. And we have watched, and that's a, that's a whole generation, like 40 years can be considered like a generation. What we have seen is not an advancement, but a retraction. So there's two things going on. Either the fivefold is not doing their job, which is yes. But the other thing is, is that in the last days, we're going to have an increase in spiritual warfare because you can see that in the Bible. So I have... Um, my accessories are anyway i had i had uh, the lord had spoken to me this scripture verse and that's why i was looking up there i wasn't on my phone playing you know some sort of tiktok thing i was actually researching because um timothy received some letters from paul timothy was like a, a younger pastor he was like a student and and paul was mentoring him and Timothy would receive instruction, and that's why it's really important, even though they seem, that seems boring sometimes, some scriptures seem, you know, boring. But Paul was being very pro prophetic. And he said, in chapter 3 of 2 Timothy, this is kind of where I'm going tonight with these momentum breakers, because I'm going to be talking about a subject about the momentum breakers that has to the subject matter is unrealistic expectations and what happens is is we misinterpret what's going on in the spirit but because we have dreams visions things like that and we sense different things but the warfare has increased so it, it's it's like you got to be on your game a lot more you, if you have a dream you can't just like say okay well um, that's the way it's going to be because it, it could be that the Spirit is telling you what, what God wants, but it may not happen because it has to do with you interacting with that dream and doing something about it with your authority. And that's what I want to talk about tonight is there's unrealistic expectations. Because so, like I expected us to get you know a 600-seat auditorium, and I didn't get that. You know, and... and, the, and and, you know, every place we've gone this week has been standing room only, but some places were 600 people and it still wasn't big enough. And these are like places that we've never gone to before, some of them. But I expect that because I want to do what God is telling me to do. But I'm going to show you how Paul and everyone, you know, couldn't even do what God told them to do because it says, I long to come to you. Paul said, I long to come to you, but Satan... Satan resisted me. He opposed me, but he said, I hope I can come next year. You know, and nobody wants to talk about these things. Jesus got, you know, he couldn't do miracles in his own hometown. These kind of things no one wants to talk about, but if, if I want to know if the Son of God wasn't allowed to do what the Father told him to do, I want to know why, how, I want to get some questions answered. Why? Because then that helps me. To understand what I'm dealing with, right? Okay, so this is what this is what it it says here. It says, um, "This know also." In other words, be established in this. Paul's saying that in the last days, which we are in, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. They shall covet, be boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy without natural affection. This, this is what the, the, the Lord spoke to me on the way down here in the elevator. Is he, he actually said that word. And I noticed, I noticed because of a critical spirit and because people are, are traumatized, 
they automatically doubt and do not believe right off the bat. And then you, got, you all have to work because I've had to do this. Well, you have to work through that doubt and unbelief to actually believe what somebody is saying because you want proof because you've been hoodwinked so many times that, that you know, you almost, you know, like with us, our ministry, we, we have an organization that's like 30 lawyers and, and we're talking to them every day. And we're like submitting everything because we are IRS ready. We're, we're anything ready, except for if, if, if certain people talk and I don't understand what they're saying and my, they're my leader. I don't know what that about that. But I can't, I can't translate some things. But I am ready for anything. But why is it that you have to have 30 lawyers? You saw the curriculum, right? The first night we started out with, let's see, is that second grade? Yes, sir. How many were there? We have uh, seven books. That was seven. Started out with seven, right? Yes. Okay, so out of seven, but when somebody's not looking, oh yeah, that. do you know how many times we've had to tackle people that were stealing from the book table, and I give it out for free, and you have to tell them I'm not. You don't have to steal. I'll give it to you. Okay, so, so just hear me out then, okay? Now that I got your attention, is that these people are going to be without natural affection, which means that they're not going to care, and it's going to be hard to get into that place where they actually care. So they become narcissistic. They become worshipers of themselves, and they become satanic in their personality. Where, where they can't seem to have any compassion. They can't sense that all of you, I mean, all of you, the reason I do this is because I know how hungry you are. Everybody all over the world is hungry for God. But I know what you go through just to get to a meeting because I used to go to meetings. And what you have to go through just to get here and what it costs you to get here. So I don't complain about the cost. I don't complain about anything, actually. But what I, I realized is, is that after only six years of being in the ministry, Kathy and I, we still have compassion. We have compassion because we care about people, so we'll go further and do the right thing. Whereas if what I notice is if people are in the ministry too long, they get so beat up that they, they don't have that natural affection anymore. And they forget why they're, why they're in there. They're in the ministry because Jesus looked on the crowd and had compassion on them and healed them. And the, the connection that you have to have with people is compassion. You have to have compassion. That's how healing flows. It's through the, through the wires. The electricity flows through the wires of compassion. And this is, what, this is what Satan wants from the other side, is he wants to get people to where they won't respond to the Spirit of God. But you have, to, you have to respond in compassion because the Spirit is having compassion. Do, do you get that? Okay, so it, here, here's... I didn't mean to shock you, but you know, it, 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 it's, it is kind of funny that some of the biggest crooks or in the body of Christ. It's just, it's just amazing to me. It shouldn't be. We should be examples in the world. Now, all of you, I mean, that's why I'm talking to you, because I'm talking to you as, as though we're sitting around the, the fire eating pizza or something. You know, I'm not like saying that you would do this kind of thing. But what I'm saying is that Paul was warning us prophetically, and he was telling Timothy, listen, this is the way it's going to be in the end. He said um, they're going to be without Natural affection, they're going to be truce breaker, breakers, false accusers, incontent, I don't know what incontent means, <laughs> fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And then he, he concludes with this, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He said from all those kinds of people, turn away, have nothing to do with them. 
Well, that would probably mean you'd have to leave some churches. Okay, so this is what is happening right now on the earth, is that the separation is happening, and it's very painful, because you're realizing that you've been talking to a tear, or a goat, or an unwise virgin. See, the, that, that is all among us, but in the end, it becomes apparent, and then we get, we're given instructions on don't tear, don't pull up the tears because they've creeped in, and you're, they're going to damage the whole church. They're going to damage a whole bunch of people, so leave them until the very end. Okay, they let the angels do it. That's the instructions we we're given on that. There's the unwise virgins, but see, everyone fell asleep. All ten of them fell asleep, right? But when they woke up, there are five that had prepared. So that's all I want to prepare the five. I'm not after all ten, because five of them did not prepare. And Jesus already spoke that parable, so I'm not going to change that. There's certain things I can't change, and one of them is really you. I, I have no power to change you. I have the power to speak the gospel, to, to tell the good news, but you have to receive it, and you have to receive it through faith. I have to preach it, the truth, through love. And then you can receive it because it runs through that line, that compassion line, and you can receive it. Okay? All right. But here's the thing, is we don't want to call it soon enough because we're thinking that maybe things will change. And in an emergency, you can't really do too much in the way of waiting. If you know certain things are, are happening, then you have to make a decision because time can be on your side, but it's slowly slipping away to where you're getting boxed in if you let things go too far. And that is where wisdom comes in. That's where people in the spirit will be able to make a judgment on something spiritually and let the Lord in any situation help you to navigate and make a decision very quickly because the time is is very important for these things. So the separation has already happened. And God allowed certain things to happen. He was not the origin of it, but He allowed it to happen, just like He allowed Israel to circle, circle for 40 years in the desert when it was a 14-day journey. And it was because of their unbelief. It was because of their rebellion. Their, they called them stiff. He called, God called them stiff-necked. You got to remember that God actually repented that he even made man at one point. So he was upset several different times in the Bible. And we got to remember that that in these last days, we're going to have people that are going to, you know, really be satanic. Okay, so I want to talk about that. I, I wanted to go a little further with this. So. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. That's in verse 13. But he's saying, you continue in these things that you have learned from me. And he's talking about the truth and doctrine, you know, and things like that. So I'll leave all night on this. I want to get into the, the application of all this because essentially, essentially what's happening is you're, you're supposed to be uh, where we are as a body of Christ supposed to be making some calls right now about things and discernments and we're not doing it. We're, we're waiting for someone else to do it, or a prophet or whatever, and you're, you're watching Daystar, you're watching TBN, you're waiting for somebody to say something. It is in these last days that there's a deception coming that even the very elect could be deceived. And so I really feel as though it's time to just tell you how it works on the other side, how it really works on the other side, and what is for you and what is against you. And, and what can you do to gain enough discernment to do the right thing when wrong things are happening? Because the whole idea about wrong things happening to you is that the whole idea about stuff that happens is to change your personality so that God cannot use you. Bad things, when they happen, if you do it right, they increase your effectiveness because of your character. But how many of us can, how much more can we take? 
Are we at our limit? Do we have support? Do we have what we need in our lives? Do we have the people we need? Like, like we have people in our lives and we say, you know, everybody needs one of the, you know, and I name them. Everybody needs one of these. But, you know, there are people, there are world-known people that you know in Christianity that I have said things to and they did not listen to me and they are not even serving the Lord right now. And they're, they're, they're way bigger than me. But I, I said something to them years ago. And they even told me, they said, you know, when you say, you know, they're probably watching from Hollywood right now. And, and, and uh, they said, you know, I didn't like you. You're, you're my friend, but I didn't like it when you tell me the truth. He said, I got mad at you, but you were right. And he goes, I needed you because no one else would, had the guts to tell me. But see, now they're, 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 they're out. And I, don't, I, don't, I want them to get back. But this is happening. It's going to happen more and more. And so the Lord has asked me not to fix the, the fivefold. What he said to do was provide for people's needs by taking brand new students, people that aren't church people, aren't pastors, you know, necessarily, and just, edu- just listen to what Herb Kelleher told me. When he was forming Southwest Airlines, he, was, he, was, he would sit and talk with me. I, I got time. I got the President's Award from him for Southwest Airlines one year. And he said, I don't want, because we would hire people. We would have to go through thousands and thousands of people. He said, I don't want airline people. He said, I want people that know nothing about the airlines so that we can train them correctly because we don't want to become like every other airline. So he was willing to take someone who didn't know anything. I mean, I hope they know what, you know, what an airplane looks like. But other than that, you know, the, he wanted to train. He, we had a training. And what that did was we knew what we were getting. We knew because we trained everybody the same way. So when everybody got out of their training for whatever jobs they were, we knew what we had. And, and for years, we kept the culture at Southwest Airlines, and it was like heaven on earth. It's the best job, best company to work for. But after a while, we grew so much that they had to start, I mean, I, I, mean, I was told, just get warm bodies and we'll weed them out during probation. That's what I was told. I hope they're not watching because I'll get in trouble for that. But we would hire people just to get, because we, uh, they, we'd get airplanes, 20 and 30 airplanes, um, and put them online. Sometimes every couple months we would have 20 or 30 new airplanes. And to support that, you had to have 13, I believe, 13 flight attendants and I think, uh, I think seven or eight pilots for each airplane. You know, it was, a, it was a lot. It was like 20 employees just for the in-flight and the flight deck. And then all the support around it. You know, so you're talking like 30 to 50 people for every airplane. So... I noticed after a while, after doing this, they, they started hiring other airlines, and then we started acquiring other airlines. And the personality of that airline started to affect us, and we, uh, we would have, I would fly with people that they, that they would steal from the company, just like somebody stole from me and stole from God. You know? And I, I said, what are you doing? That's, this is my company. This is our company. You don't steal from the company. You put that back. And then they, they, would, they would cheat the company on and everything. It's like, don't cheat my company because I, I was a shareholder. We all got stock, you know? And um, there was, so there was ownership. And, and this is what I'm noticing about the body of Christ is there's not an ownership or an accountability anymore. And what, what it was is, is you got to realize that you got to go back to the original vision that Paul had about the church, which I taught on last night, so you can watch last night, but it's talking about Ephesians chapter 1, which is a mirror of Colossians chapter 1. And I dare you to be able to stop after chapter 1 because you'll want to read chapter 2 because you're going to see it from a different perspective now is that in the New Testament, God is speaking through His Son now, and the foundation has already been laid. This is all according to Scripture if you want to bring the Bible into it. And it is all about the body now. There, there are no superheroes. It's all about us together. 
I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it, but it's become something else. And see, nobody wants to say anything, but knows that in order to take out the big boys that are the, the prince of the powers of the air, see, you have earthbound devils, which are serpents and scorpions, which we have the power over. Jesus came as a human being. He was the son of God. He was a God man. He came and walked in authority and died with a, with a human body so that we could be given his name to trample on serpents and scorpions and, and have power over all the enemy. But it, serpents and scorpions are earthbound. And that has to do with the hybrid race, the genetics, which they were disembodied and they become unclean spirits, which are still on the earth. And the angels, according to the scripture, are bound. They're already, and there weren't as many as you think that left their abode. They just followed Lucifer into the ground. They didn't even understand what happened. So what you're dealing with on, the, on this parallel, these realms, which the cameras will pick up and you see in the corner of your eye. If you investigate your eye, I did all this. I did it. spent a week talking about all this stuff. But the, if you look at the shape of your eye and you look at uh, certain times and a certain lighting, your eye actually, the way it's shaped, will actually pick up some of the other realm out of the corner. So that's why you see things moving and you look and you can't see it, but you caught it because of the way that your eye is shaped. You'll see it'll, it'll bleed over. And also when, it's, when you, have, you have rods and you have cones, and you, so you can pick up color and then you can pick up just black and white because what happens is at a certain time where the light diminishes, it flips over to just black and white. So you actually don't see color even at dusk. It becomes gray and different shades of black and white. You all just looking at me. He didn't pay attention. And this is back in high school. Okay, so it, it's a when you fall asleep, as you go into the sleep mode, you pass through the realm where you used to live before you fell as a human being. And in that, that half zone, you call it, as you're, transport, uh, you're going into your sleep zone, you can see in the spirit. And if, you, if you're keen on this, you can fall asleep. And as you're falling asleep, all of a sudden you'll see the room you're in and you'll see stuff in there and it'll, it'll, it'll wake you up, or you'll hear somebody talking to you. And I don't hear voices, but there are many voices in the world, and there are many things going on around you, and I hear stuff sometimes, things screaming at me because they hate me. I also hear my name being called if I'm gonna be running late and I fell back asleep. I've had angels tap my foot and call my name. So many times you wouldn't even believe it. Sometimes, several times a week, especially when I was at the airline. But you know, that would get me on a TV show and sell lots of books. But is that what it's really all about? So I don't really talk about all this stuff anymore. But the spirit realm is real. And we have help, but we also have an enemy. The enemy that we have is that were from the, the race of people that lived before the flood that are disembodied. And Jesus encountered these, but they were always there. Jesus was walking in authority, and when they saw him, they realized they're done. So they thought that they were going to be tormented before their time. Because they knew that there was a certain time, but the scenario on the earth had not looked like what they were told yet. But they knew that Jesus was on the ground. So they said, have you come to torment us before our time? Well, it clearly says in Scripture, left their abode, are, are chained. So if they're chained, how the area? Because it, it, why would they even say that if they were chained? What are they doing in people if they're chained somewhere? See, even a five-year-old would agree with me and agree with the scriptures. All I'm doing is saying what the Bible says. However, what we're dealing with is massive amounts of spirits that are half-breeds. 
they're half this, half that. God, you got to remember that the animals were interbreeding as well, and that he had to destroy the animals as, as well, except for the ones he chose to be on the ark. And this is the absolute truth, is that he, it, it says that he was going to destroy everything. And he did, except for the eight, which in Hebrew is perfect in their genetics, perfect in their generations, it says. Noah was perfect. He did not allow his family to interbreed. So there was only eight left. And the animals that came to Noah were the only ones that were allowed on the ark. Period. And Jesus said it will be just like the days of Noah before the Son of Man comes. Well, you didn't want to live before the Noah. You know, during the days of Noah, you didn't want to live during that time. Because the whole earth was so corrupt, just to quote the Bible, that God repented that he had made man. It was that bad. And so those people were glad to get on the ark. And they were glad that, that you know, that Barney the, uh, the dinosaur didn't get on. And he looks kind of fake anyway because he's purple, you know. I mean, if you see Barney coming up the ramp, I'm saying, no, no, no. So, no we're not going to have that, right? So the discernment we need in these days, I believe, is just you need people like you. You need to just preach the truth. You need to teach the truth. You need to talk to people about the truth and just call it in a way where it's a sharp sword. Because what it does is it eliminates 20 years of being in wrong relationship. And all the discernment found out that you, you, you bought the wrong house, yeah. bought the wrong car. You, 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 the decisions you made were, were at a time when you were being affected, affected by the environment that you were in and you were not able to make quality decisions, which put many people around me and I call everyone and I talk to everyone and, and tell them, this is what the Lord's saying. Thing. I am not bashful to bring people around me and my whole staff. I'm tra I hired five teenagers just a couple months ago. They're full-time staff and they're, head they're going to be heads over departments and they're going to run Warrior Notes eventually one day. They're teenagers. They ha Some of them haven't even finished high school yet. But I'm training them because this can't be about Kevin and Kathy. This can't be about the boy that went to heaven. It's got, Warrior Knows has to be about you, which means that, yes, God used Sid Roth and a whole bunch of other people to get me out there, and I'm thankful for that. But this ministry can't be based on somebody that went to heaven and didn't even fast or pray for it. It's, it's misleading. In other words, it's not fair for you to think that you might have that happen too, because I, I really doubt it. And it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with God choosing to do something by His grace in order to influence a whole generation. It has nothing to do with me. It could have been you. And I guarantee you, if you had what happened to me, you'd be doing this too. You would be doing it, and you would be doing miracles every day and writing books, like books every week, filming several hours a day, flying your own airplane, whatever it takes, right? whatever it takes. But it's not a status thing. This is about an assignment and a mission where God's grace is being displayed. So we need you, all of you, everywhere, to just preach the truth, to speak the truth in love, and not eliminate people. Let God do that. In other words, we can't... Because what we do is, is uh, we show others why you're not God. If, when you're critical, everybody's thankful you're not God. <laughs> now, do you want that to be the thought when somebody, when after you've talked to somebody and you walk away and they go, well, I'm glad they're not God. Okay, this is the thing, this is honest. 
This will keep you humble. This will, this, that you should have the aroma, according to Paul, the aroma of Christ. God, they should be able to smell God. They should have known that they encountered something from the other realm, something you said, something you did for them. Um, it, should be, uh, it should be something, a token somehow that was transferred from you to them. And it was all God. It was all his plan. And this is what I'm looking for every day. I did this. We did this without, uh, you know, without having the perfect car. Or the, it, we had an apartment. We couldn't even pay our electric bill. And we both worked. We, we were this way anyway. We found ways to do something for somebody. And we didn't need to have a pulpit or, uh, you know, nonprofit or anything like that. We didn't, we didn't have to. We bought our own laptops. We bought our own cameras. We, we did everything. We started ourselves. I, I published my first book myself. I paid to, to the, the truck came, the big semi truck came, and the guy was like swearing under his breath because he had to come into my neighborhood and dump pallets of my books off that Kathy and I worked for to pay for. Why? Because we were sent. We were, we were to do this. It didn't matter. We worked extra to buy our own books. Kathy packed them. We, FedEx came and picked them up. And, and we, we, got, we tried to get Southwest to beat the truck to our destination. So we would get on a Southwest Airlines airplane. And I had to pay for a ticket. I, know, I don't even know what that's like. Because we, we wouldn't get there if we were running standby, you know. I could go around the world on standby, but I would never go around the world. I'd be still sitting where I started. So you have to buy tickets. So we did all that. Up, I would be. I would do the music. I would preach. Kathy would do the book table, and then uh, we would send the boxes back to our house and we'd see if Southwest can beat them back there. The same day, you know. And we had to be willing to do that. And that, if you're willing to speak the truth in love, even if you lose friends. Even if it means that you're 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 left out of, of different things. Oh, low battery. I better pick I better pick up here real fast. I'm going to going to half power here. Mayday, mayday. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to give my coordinates here in a minute. I'm going down. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Anna. All right. The computer says, you got to be kidding, that's all you got? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. So, unreal are by, by the, the, uh, re the realm that we live in down here, the way the world system is set up is that you cannot succeed. You will not get above the debt. You will not give above the, the diagnosis up so that you are essentially trapped so there's the debt system there's um, the energy situation there's the the banking system the pharmaceutical thing there's all this stuff going on and they can't knock us off live that's why I'm saying these words as you would never hear me say is because we're not live so they can't knock us off and take it out because we got it on a little SD card and the intelligence officers in here would have to go and take them and then I would know who they are but you, 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 have to, you have to call it as it is. If you want to go on starting this week, you know, if you want to go on, like I've been saying, there's fire in the heavens right now. And it's a holy cleansing fire. And it's going to manifest in different ways as it touches different situations and different people. But your people are going to know that they have not been obedient. And so they will be demoted. They'll be demoted out of the ministry. There'll be corporations. There'll be situations that, that it, the fire touches it, and it's going to burn according to the righteousness of God, the heavenly realms. So if somebody is submitting to the fire on their own, turning themselves in, which is what we're supposed to do, we should fall on, not fall on us. Paul said, judge yourself lest you be judged with the world. So this was all about the communion table as well. So we have this way of getting it right with God personally. 
so that we don't have to go through, we, it'd be like we were in Goshen. Because we were within, we're in Christ, we're hidden in Christ. And I just need to preach this message this week because people don't seem to understand what's really going on here. And the, what's happening is, is our, behind the scenes, Satan is pushing the timeline because he knows that God is about to do something profound on the earth. And this started three years ago. And he is, Satan is trying to stop it by, by breaking the momentum. So we were, we were being established and a message was going forth. And so during these last three years, Warrior Notes has, has quadrupled. That's financially, and it's more than that, more than that actually, but size-wise, we, we, we went from, you know, we went to almost 34,000 students, and this is in four years. And, and the fellowships, we just started them to just say, listen, you know, if you want to read, if you're a student, we want you to learn how to teach a Bible study as part of the program. So um, all you that want to start a Bible study and call it a warrior church or a warrior fellowship, just let us know. So we have about 2,200 churches all over the world now that are meeting in their homes and have pantries and are, you know, some of them are having to get buildings because they've grown so much. And some of that is just in a couple months. Okay, because of all of that I just said, it, it, I'm called to not fix the church. I'm called to be a solution for those who are outside that are really good people like all of us that have been hurt and are ostracized. And, and, and they, we've encountered what Jesus encountered. He preached in the synagogues and they didn't ask him back because demons started manifesting. So that's what, what, what started happening when Jesus was on the ground. So the parallel realm, it was intact, but you didn't hear a lot. If you, if you do a search, a word search on Satan, and you, you, you know, I've done this, I've exhausted up in the Old Testament about evil spirits, you know, there, and you'd be surprised. There's like a handful of scriptures because there wasn't that many uh, manifestations. Uh, King David brought a couple up, you know, that ma a couple manifestations. Um, so they were mentioned. It said, you know, and there's certain things that happened, like uh, Satan rose up to tempt David to count at the fighting men, you know, and then we find that when he played the harp that evil spirits would leave Saul. Okay, so we have these kind of things, you know, we see, have Job, but see, Job was written a long time ago. And, and we see in Job where Satan was allowed to do the four different things when he was given permission to. So if I were you, I'd be like checking out, if, if Satan is allowed to do something, how does he work? Well, it's through the weather because he, he, he had tornadoes come. It was through the Sabaeans and all the others that were listed there. So it was the, all the pagan neighbors that Job had or, or the people that are in government or whatever. You know, they're just all of a sudden they respond, right? Okay, so you have the enemy in people. You have the weather. Then you have the fact that, that they, it touched Job's body. He got, he got hives or COVID or something, you know. So, and then, and then, then his children got killed, right? And the fields got burnt. So it touched all that. But this is all included in on some of these things I'm mentioning. The, so the fourth thing was, is that his wife was so frustrated that she just said, just curse God and die. And that was a death blow because he, he had, Satan had been able to penetrate the inner circle of the family. And so I have had people write me and the women that are saying, well, you just don't understand what she was going through. <laughs> Why are you getting on her? And I could say the same thing about Peter. Well, you don't know what he was going through. And he's speaking by the name of Satan. And Jesus is like, get behind me, Satan. And it's me. And Peter's like, it's me. Jesus. Jesus, you need more sugar. You're low, you know? No. Do you see what I'm saying? 
Okay, so that's what I want to talk to you about. That was my introduction. Okay, introduction other way. But here's the thing that the Spirit of the Lord told me. He said, in good to the and to us, not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. Okay, and if you look, there are times in the Bible like a vision. It wasn't a dream. It wasn't an angel. It wasn't Jesus appearing to him. It wasn't thus saith the Lord, or it wasn't one of the gifts of the Spirit. It was the still small voice. And it said it seemed good. It was the witness of the Holy Spirit. And this is predominantly what I saw in heaven that we are led by. But it is the least talked about because it's not spectacular. But it is supernatural. We have put people on, the, on a pedestal that fast for 21 days and actually have something happen, but it might be just they need to eat. It, it could be that they fasted into the other realm, but, you know, how many of us can do that? And once we do that, I mean, you know, that, I mean, I used to have a full set of hair until I started fasting. Okay, so I, I like, I, I went years with just not eating. And yet, yeah, I, I, I could tell you, I, I, I increased in many areas, but I decreased in some areas too. Okay, so you, you, are you, is that the only way? See, because what I'm looking for is practical things that we can all do every day that is spiritual activity, but it's not spectacular. It won't get you on a Christian television. It won't get a, you know, the, the, the publishers won't be on the phone calling, trying to get a hold of you. You know, and they won't be making a movie about you. You won't get invited many pl places if you don't have these spectacular things happen because we, we are really entertainment oriented. Okay, but that does not create character. Uh, when, you, when you do entertainment, it doesn't do, have any character building when you're being entertained because... It's really neutral. Now, if you're going to sit and watch and watch videos that are going to help you to do your job better or to learn a skill and you are focused and you want to have an impartation from someone else, then, then that is not, no longer entertainment. It's educational. So this is what this is what I do. I'm in manuals all the time because I'm all I'm learning other aircraft. But what I do is I will stop because I know based on when I was in college, we did studies on attention spans and things like that, all the psychological things about a human being and all the things about the brain and how everything works. And I found that if I take a break from the hard just trying to memorize things and visualize systems on airplanes or whatever I'm doing at the time or doing writing a book is that I'm doing them I'm, I'm laying it out and I'm studying the Greek the Hebrew and the homebrew you know I'm trying to get everything together then what I'll do is I'll break and what I'll do is I'll go and watch someone fly that aircraft on YouTube watching a GoPro camera watching somebody do it and then I'm like oh so that's what that's that's how that works it starts to tie together then I go back to the manual again and I learn and I learn more about it then I break and then I, I watch so there are certain people that are speaking by the spirit it seems like there are fewer than there used to be because a lot of the generals have left but I sat under those generals, and it's my job to do at least what they did and, and then add to that. Not add to the doctrine, but add to in, in power and presence. You know, being out there. A lot of these men didn't travel like, like I do. I believe that being out there and being in places like this with you all, that there's an impartation and there's a battle that goes on that we win because we all get together in, in the flesh. We all agree. There's a, to see, the impartation you're getting in this room is, is what I'm walking in, but it's for you. It's, it's, I, don't, I don't necessarily feel that we should have excluded the body like we have. 
with the fivefold. I feel like the, the gifts of spirit were given to everyone. And I, I sense that, that we got overbalanced. But no one's going to say anything because this has been going on for a long time. But it's now time for the, at the end of the age, it's got to be about the body of Christ. We've got to be in unity. We've got to be uh, in agreement. We've got to be mature. Okay. It seems good to me and the Holy Spirit. And, and you're, you're, thinking, you're thinking that it's not spectacular and that you're not being used at this certain level, so you're not spiritual. But it's so funny is, it's just a found is, is that um, thing about how to be led by the Spirit, He'll use things that are really close to your heart, and He'll tell you to give them away. And so I had, I, I had this happen at work. Um, I was working with a crew, and I had a certain watch that, that I just loved. And I was wearing it, and this girl that I was flying with, she said, I love that watch. My dad, watch. My dad had one, and one day it was gone and sold it so that we could buy food. Aww. Well, you know what I did. I took mine off and gave it. I said, you give this to your dad and tell him that God remembered. Well, she started crying. And she still, see, I see her comments sometimes. She still, tell, she still comments, I remember the day. This man's a, a true man of God. He, I remember the day when he did this. You know? And this is the way it should be, though, is that, is that sometimes the things that are dear to us, we're told to do something. Now, what, now what, what, if I wouldn't have obeyed God, um, then I would not have participated in that joy. But the other thing is, is that normally I wouldn't wear that watch to work because, you know, the airplanes are really hard on, you know, the airplanes are metal and they, everything that you bump, it just breaks. I mean, I broke so many watches and stuff like that, that I just didn't even, I had to wear a watch. I was, I wasn't allowed to even fly. You know, we had to be it being in uniform meant that we had to have a watch on and my hair was not allowed to touch my collar and I had to be immaculate. I had to weigh a certain amount. And, you know, then, then everybody sued, you know, and got rid of all that stuff. But we, we were like, we had to, like, show up, and they, we had to be inspected. They looked at my nails. They looked at everything. Yeah. Yeah, Southwest was, yeah, but we wanted that certain standard. Okay, but what if I hadn't worn that watch? I felt like I was supposed to wear that watch. What if I, w I would never have known what God would, would do with me and that watch, I would have never known. That's my point. So one day, somebody that um, really didn't like me at all, I mean, really didn't like me. Did I mention that? <laughs> I mean, did not like me. The Lord said, you give him $50,000. I said, well, then you tell my wife, which, <laughs> because I know there's no way, there's no way. There is no way. So I told her, I says, you know, um, so, uh, God's telling me to give um, so-and-so some money. Um, if you get a figure, just to let me know what it is. So she gets on the treadmill in my office, and she's doing the treadmill. She gets off, and she just walks up. She goes, it's $50,000. I go, go back and pray again. No, no, <laughs> like, no. Thing. Here's the thing. I'm telling you this. It, I, I don't like to talk about money because I know all, you know, I don't even want to be in the ministry because of all that. But God has blessed us to where we are out of debt. We, we, don't, we don't actually need money. I mean, the reason that we still have money coming in is because we can just do more. But what I'm saying is I'm not nervous about anything. And, and most ministers told me, you don't say what you just said because then your offerings will be nothing, you know. And I'm like, well, that just means God's going to have to get off his throne and do something then about it. But, he, you know, he doesn't have to. It's supernatural. But see, I want this for everybody. You shouldn't be chasing after the money. It should be chasing after you because it's got a mission, right? Okay, all right. Getting back to this. So we gave that to this person, and now I'm his favorite person. 
<laughs> but the whole thing is about what you hold dear to you and can you let go of that and that trains you to hear from the Holy Spirit because it separates between your soul and your spirit. The Spirit of God dwells in your spirit. So for Kathy and I to let go of a whole year's salary, it would have to be God and God won over us. But see, what he really did was he taught us to trust the, the still small voice and that he can confirm it. Do you get what I'm saying or do I need to say it all over again because I'm getting tired? Did you get it? Okay, so it's not that he needs money, that he needs your watch. He, need, he, he wants you completely. And so he tries his best to work with you to where you can separate your soul and your spirit through the word of God, which is that sword that will separate. And the only thing that can divide between your soul and your spirit, according to Hebrews 4, then you're able to discern the Lord's voice versus your voice because he's going to ask you to do things that will tear between you and the spirit. It will actually separate and you'll start feeling a tear. Just let him cut it. Just let him divide it. And this is why you need the word of God. You need to be able to saturate yourself in the word of God and you need to pray in the spirit. You need to be able to operate in the spirit, in tongues, and you need to have the framework from the manual. You need to be able to be well-versed in what the Bible says, because the spirit is the word, and, it is the, and the word is the spirit. Okay? All right. Having said all that now, as you start to operate in this, to eliminate unrealistic expectations because it starts to eliminate deception. So this is what happens. I'm going to close this as a symbol because the Spirit of the Lord is wanting you to hear this and you better really listen is because your personality has been formed by other people and other entities growing up. Your, your personality is not just all you. You think it is. And this is what you hear. I'm like, well, where's Elaine at? I, uh, I told everybody that the van is leaving for the airplane at 7 o'clock. We have to be in the airplane. You know, this was the Southwest, and I was the lead flight attendant. So here's lobby time. This is when we're in the van. Everybody has their cell phone, their wallet. Everybody is dressed, and we leave at 10 after in order to get there at 7.30 because we're going we're to have to do our checks, and we're going to start boarding on the hour at 8. We are going to leave at 8.30. We have to leave at 8.30 because all of you paid to get from point A to point B, and you show up and go through hell to get to the airplane so at least we can be there because it's like hell on earth to get go through an airport and I had to be there for 30 years in an airport dealing with all that for 30 years I don't want all of you to have to go through that but you do okay but at least our part is we you pay for your ticket we you we show up on time and we're there ready for you so I put that out because all crew members know that and if you're a couple minutes late it's no problem but everybody as a crew member they're, they're the crew members are not late that's why I like hanging out with them because we're always early because it's ingrained in us well that was not my personality when I got hired because I almost got fired because my personality needed to change so it happened once the next time I'm fired. So I went another 29 years without it happening. You have to make a decision. Do you, do you want to make money and do you want to have that job? Well, then you have to accept the responsibility. But my personality was not. And I had to. So what I had to do was I calculated how long it would take to do it to change a tire. 
So my, 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 whole, my, whole, my whole formula is if I get stopped by a police officer or if I get a flat tire or if I forget something and I have to go back and get it, I calculated all of that and then I have a time that I must leave by, which gives me 45 minutes extra time. And so I would always show up and I would always be at least an hour early. And I wasn't getting paid for it. I had to change my personality. There was no one going to help me. There were plenty of people who were ready to fire me, but there wasn't anybody there to help me. Why? Because I made a, an agreement that I would be on time. But like I said, all hell breaks loose down here because it's evil spirits. They will break your momentum. They will cause you to be late. They'll cause things to happen. And so you have to be able to change your personality. Jesus set his face like flint towards Jerusalem because that was his assignment. So when Peter said what he said, he goes, get behind me, Satan, because it was God's plan that he was going to be delivered over and, and crucified. And that's what he was saying to his disciples. I'm going to be delivered, handed over, betrayed. I'm going to be crucified. And on the third day, I'm going to be raised from the dead. And Peter said, not so. And as soon as someone said that, it didn't matter that he was a student. Three and a half years, a student, a, 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 a soon to be an apostle, he was corrected because it didn't follow the plan. And, and three and a half years of being with Jesus, I would think that all of us would have done, done a pretty good job. You know, if we had an opportunity to be with Jesus for three and a half years, I believe we would have done a good job. But see, what you don't understand about them is they weren't even sure. They don't even know why they left their jobs. When, when everyone else left Jesus, he asked, are you going to leave too? He goes, well, where would we go? You have the words of life. That's all they knew was he had words that were life. Oh, that's really cool. But not anymore. My feelings are hurting. You know. Okay, so personalities in this room have to change in order to stay with the vision that God has, which will cause you to hear from God better when you start to line up in your way of receiving the word. Receiving instruction from the Holy Spirit has to do with how you're framed. If you don't have the proper frame of mind, you're not going to be able to go with it. You're going to have hesitancy. And so a lot of times, like in sports, different sports, I would sit in a chair and go over my whole diving routine because I was only allowed to practice like an hour a day. But I went to States my second year of diving and I dove three times as much because I sat in a chair, I closed my eyes and I went over every dive and every movement, I, the timing, and I went to States from knowing nothing. And I would watch the Olympics. I would watch diving. And that's how I beat my friend in golf. I never golfed. I lived on a golf course, so he thought I played. And that's how I beat him. I beat him. I've never played. I said, I don't want to play. But he wanted to beat somebody, I think. So he said, well, let's go play. So I beat him. But I've never played before. Had, he actually showed me how to hold the, the clubs. But what I did was I always watched Tiger Woods. I watched Tiger Woods all the time. On Sunday after church, I came home and Kathy and I would eat and we'd watch Tiger Woods. I watched Tiger Woods and, you know, I don't watch him drive because he can't drive <laughs> a car. You know, I wouldn't want him driving a car, but he's good at, at driving a golf ball. He's good at, at what he does. So I just saw him. I didn't see anybody else. And I was able to tap into that because that's all I saw and I rehearsed that in my mind. And so after showing, being shown how to hold and position things, I just, I would see Tiger Woods or that guy, what was that guy daily that would just whack balls, John, oh my gosh. 
that's all I saw. Yeah, but I didn't drink. I didn't drink, you know. <laughs> but he, man, there was nobody like him, okay? But I only would, I would see that every time I would tee off, I think you call it. <laughs> I would just whack it, man. But I was, I didn't see myself. I saw him. I saw John. When I got, you know, to where I'm using like this wedge thing, wedgie, you know, can I have the wedgie, please, number nine or whatever, you know. <laughs> I mean, I didn't know what I was doing, and I beat that guy, and he got so mad. So he t he, we went back the next day, and um, I beat him again, and he, he quit. He actually broke his clubs. And um, I've never played since then. Now, I've done that with diving. I've done that with all my musical instruments. I just watched Kenny G, went to his concert, got on the front row, met him, talked with him. I even got some of his saxophones that he had. But I would go into a dark room and I would just picture the concert and how he held it, you know, how he, how he, he played, how he turned, how he walked. Um, Yo-Yo Ma, that's how I learned how to play the cello. I never took lessons in any of these instruments. I watched them play, then I'd go to a dark room and I would remember and I would see them playing. My dad was a professional saxophone player, never gave me a lesson. But when he died, he listened to my album all the time. When I played the saxophone on it, he goes, there's no way. He said, there has to be a God. There's no way that this guy could do this. He admitted it, that it was a miracle. But he got saved. But he got saved because he saw God moving through me. And he said, you got the real thing. And I'm a Christian today because of you. Because you got the real thing. He said, you would say stuff and it would happen. So right before he passed, he called me and he said, you have no idea uh, how much you are helping people all over the world never back off. Never back off. And he was crying. And I never saw him. I mean, I saw him again, but I didn't get to talk to him because he's in a coma. And the same thing happened with um, Ryan's mom, which is her, today is the day. Right? She went to heaven. She called me right before she went to heaven, said the exact same thing to me. And I never talked to her again. She went to heaven. She said, you have no idea what you're doing on this earth and never back off. Never back off, Kevin. You're doing it. And never got to talk to her again. So there is the other realm. And uh, I'm, I'm sensing that we all need to just accept the fact that these things are going on. So what are momentum breakers? Well, momentum breakers are going to do everything to cause controversy, confusion, and slow you down when the Spirit starts to teach you and get a hold of you and train your personality to be a certain way so that you can operate. So I'm not asking you to be me or anybody else. What I'm asking you to do is can you allow your personality to, to be alongside with the Spirit to where you could say, it seems good to me and the Holy Spirit. That's all I'm asking. But see, this is not necessarily going to happen in churches. But I don't understand all that. But I'm not called to fix that. I'm called to preach and teach the, the Word of God, but with demonstration. So in a room, like I don't have to lay hands on you. I don't have to breathe on you. And, and you don't have to give me money to get a prophecy. You sit in this room, and I, 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 I guarantee it, you will walk out of here, and you will never be the same again, ever. And that was the deal. When I was in heaven, he sent me back, and he said, you'll have fruit that lasts. He said, they will never be the same. You tell them that. He said that the impartation from heaven is from heaven to the body, and it doesn't involve an individual having to lay hands on you. Now, it is laying on hands is, is biblical. Prophecy is biblical. But if you really want to be honest about it, prophecy was used in the congregation and everyone else had to judge it. I mean, if you really want to include, uh, you know, Corinthians in there. Now, Jesus used words of knowledge at the woman at the well. But see, those, those gifts of the Spirit are for the marketplace. You're supposed to be doing that at work. That's what I did for 30 years. I never got fired for that. But I have never had one person stop me from, being, from um, witnessing or using the gifts of the Spirit was at work. Not one person ever in 29 years stopped me and said, shut up. They were crying. They were shaking. People were falling and laughing 
but they weren't saved. There were people that I would touch, they would start crying, and I was just handing them their drink. And I go, what is wrong? It can't be that bad. <laughs> they said, I don't know. Every time you walk by, you know, she starts laughing, and I start crying. She goes, there's something on you. I go, that's Jesus. Yeah. And I would say that, okay? This was without a nonprofit organization, without a pulpit. This happened before I got married. This, this happened before Jesus appeared to me or took me to heaven. You know, this is, I believe, Jesus, what he was doing out there, he was not in the building. He was out there. He was out in the fields. Don't think about it. But demons were manifesting. Okay, so up until a certain point, think about it, demons were not manifesting. But they were there. Okay, so only David... Only, only David really encountered this. But he is the lineage of the Christ. Right? When Jesus came, everything that was intact around became apparent only because he was walking in the, the heat, the temperature of heaven, under the authority of the Father, under the anointing, and it started to cause these things to not be able to keep quiet, which is what you would have done if you were them. I got saved. Why, why did they always mouth off? I would have just kept quiet. Now, did you ever think about that? Why did they like, they just like, because they thought that Jesus could see them. They, they felt completely exposed. So this, this happens with me a lot. I mean, I can see stuff. I don't never say anything, but I can tell if something's bothering you. I can see it. So I'll come up and I'll start talking to you, and then after a while, I'll feel it leave. And that's what, but that's what I do, but I don't like make a scene out of it and make it a scene on a TV show or something, or make a movie so you can go see it at AMC or something. Because that's, that's, this is like, you're supposed to be doing this wherever you go. It shouldn't just be in a church or a, mu a, a, you know, a movie theater. This, this is supposed to be for everywhere. You're, the, the evil spirits should not feel comfortable around you. Amen. They didn't feel comfortable around Jesus, but let's be honest, they felt comfortable around the Pharisees. Everything that was going on in, at the time, they were comfortable. They probably sang the songs. They'll sing songs about God. But they won't sing songs to God. So, and, and in sermons where you don't mention the name of Jesus, there's, there's churches that are 60,000. But if you listen to the transcripts, and these are good people, they don't mention the name of Jesus. They don't mention hell. They don't mention the blood of Jesus. They don't mention repentance. Okay? That's why I wrote the power words. is because I wanted to, to, to have something that you could turn, turn your mega church into a small Bible study. is you bring back those power words. You, talk, you start talking, and what happens is, is everybody that is financing, that is entrenched in all that, they start to get uncomfortable and say, well, if you're going to start talking about that, then I'm pulling my money. Okay, so this is what happened. And, and some of these people that I could name, they wrote books. They said, if you want to have church growth, you take the cross down. You don't talk about the blood anymore because that's offensive. I mean, these books are out. And these are people that you, you they're household names. They, they said, these are things that need to be taken out. You become very seeker friendly, they called it. And then, then you start to accept other religions. And they're, I'm, come on, y'all y'all been in a cave for the last three years or 10 years? <laughs> This is, what, this is how it works, is evil spirits feel the pressure of the power of God and the visitation of angels on the earth right now. They know that something is, is apparent and is going to happen. It's, it's indefinite. It's right now indefinite. But at any moment, it could just break forth. Okay, so what, what they have to do is, is, what, is what, what you do in court. If, if, you, if, if someone is telling the truth and you're going to lose a case, and you can't, 
you can't, you don't have enough to win the case because the evidence is there that they're telling the truth, then what you have to do is discredit the witnesses. Now think about it. You go after the credibility of the people because they cannot prove. You, this, is, this is what Satan does, is he's going to try to discredit you. But you are a witness. You're not witnessing. You are the witness. Wherever you go, you are displaying the power of God. This is what's supposed to be preached. This is what Jesus preached. This is what Paul preached. All the apostles preached this. So 2,000 years later, we, we, we know better now? Well, look where we're at. We, we've gone backwards. And somebody just needs to say it. Okay, so these evil spirits, they're working to discredit so that you do not feel like you can hear from God. So where, you know, I'm going to say this, and I want you to think about this. And I want you to think about everything that you've been told is truth and what you actually believe. Did you know that you can never, ever give again in an offering plate, ever again, and still go to heaven? You wouldn't think it. Okay, the reason in the Bible that you give is because you love God and that it's a, it's a form of worship. It's a form of honoring Him, but it's also out of obedience because giving back to God causes Him to have something that you could have kept. It becomes worship, but it's, a tra it's according to the Bible in, in chapter 8 and chapter 9 of, of 2 Corinthians, it is laid up to your account. And, and, and it talks about sowing and reaping in there. They just use the wrong scriptures. You can't use the parable of the sower because that's not talking about money. But Paul does talk about it in Romans 8. And, I mean, in, in first, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9. And he talks about being a hilarious giver. He talks about the fact that some of you have a bump in the road right now financially. is what it says in some translations. that you're going through a hard time. So he was asking others to give where it says that God is blessing you at this time to even out and help. So that offering was never to leave the building. It was to be transferred over to the poor. And this is what Paul said, because perhaps you who are doing well may not someday and then they will help you. It was for equality in the body. Okay, so if every church had a pantry, if every church had a way of, of mentoring and discipling people so that we could turn people's lives around, then the enemy wouldn't be allowed to, to hurt you in your body and your mind and in and, and your finances because all of us would be together and we would all just pitch in and help. But it would also require accountability because as pastors, you know, like when I was a pastor, I was wanting to see improvement. When I was an instructor, I was wanting to see improvement. So I was wanting to see that they had done something on their own. So they came back and were doing something to in, so that there was a track record. And the body of Christ is supposed to do that. So you know that Paul was saying, listen, you got all these people, you got everybody's got a word it says everybody's got a prophecy everybody's got a song you know let it be done everybody's got a tongue interpretation he said let it be done in order and he said just severally several people you know so we're gonna get two or three of the each of these we're gonna line them up and we're gonna do it in order but he says then the congregation's gonna judge each one of them well how many how many would still think it's karaoke night now how many of you would come up if are you going to subject yourself to say, well, that's not of God. We don't feel like that's of God. I mean, in other words, that pressure was on there to keep people honest. Do you really feel like God is telling you that? Because you're about to find out, you know, because you might get voted off the island, you know. And in other words, this is what's in the scripture. And this is why we need each other. But this is what helps us to, to get out of the influence of this, this, these evil spirits. These evil spirits, they attach themselves to people's personalities. 
Okay, so this is what happens. People that have been massively delivered, their personality changes because that personality, that part of them was not them. It left when the invisible friends left. They got delivered, but then you see a change. You see a change in their body, but you also see a change in the way they process things. Okay, so today, we're not processing as a body of Christ things right. We've become very critical. And the reason why is we got people falling up the stairs to their airplanes. We've got people using million dollar missiles to shoot down a balloon. You got people fall, you know, falling off their bikes when your five year old can ride one. You get all this stuff, you're dealing with this. You're like, is this really happening? Is this a circus? You, and you feel like powerless about it. Well, then you get very critical. But see, Jesus did not pay attention to Caesar. He didn't pay attention that much to, he mentioned Herod a little bit, but, and, and Pilate, he just said, you, you wouldn't even be able to do anything if it wasn't for God, my father, giving you the power. But he didn't like address things. I mean, they took out his best friend, John the Baptist, beheaded him. Jesus didn't even go see him in jail. Didn't even go to argue his case to get him out. Didn't post bail, didn't do anything. You got to, let's come on, let's be honest. Why? Well, when you find out, let me know. No. <laughs> it's because his whole focus was on what the Father was telling him to do. And he knew that he had to stay on course, but he didn't address the political environment of the day. He just said, you know, just pay your taxes. And it wasn't even right, but the, there was a temple tax. And that's why I get upset because you're paying to go to people, their, their conferences, to learn the Word of God. You've got to be kidding me. And if you want a word, it's a thousand bucks. It's like, I'll give you one for free. I'll actually, I'll actually pay you and I'll just give you the word. It's repent. You know, <laughs> you want a word? Repent. Let's work on that. In about 10 years, you can come back. Maybe I'll have something more for you. But you see what I'm saying is because what we need is maturity. We don't need another word. We don't need hands laid on us. What we need is to connect with the Holy Spirit in this generation and get on track. And then turn it on the devil so that we are producing fruit in keeping with the repentance, which means we're turning our, our, our attention outward toward others because we are not needy anymore. Can you, can you see yourself as not being needy? Because you have to see yourself as being a source that God is using to help others. You have to be able to turn it. So this is why we, we have what we have here is, is that you become a student, but then you also are involved. And it's, it's part of the requirement. And, it, and we make it an incentive because then you get credit. And as, as you, the degree is higher, then there's more required. We, we, we know that you're studying the Bible because you're taking Bible courses, but there's also aviation courses coming out. There's health courses. There's all kinds of curriculum coming out in all different sectors. Well, with that, you still have to read the Bible a certain amount of hours. Well, it's because I need you to not just be doing the courses to get a degree, because our personalities are very goal-oriented and we do things just to get them done. However, when you walk away, are you changed? Because that's what matters the most. Jesus said, Kevin, when I speak to you, it's what you understand about what I said, not what I said. It's the intent of my word. It's not just my word, it's the intent. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, can you apply it? And what I've, I said to the Lord was, well, I'm not seeing some of the things that you said I, I should be seeing. And he goes, well, it's just so you know, it's not my fault. <laughs> so in other words, if you want to meet Jesus, if you want him to come to your church and preach, he is going to tell you that his word and his name is more than enough, his blood is more than enough, that he has done everything he's going to do. And he's going to say, I suffered and died for you. You are forgiven you are healed. He said, your finances are healed because the Spirit will lead you into all truth. Well, it, he's going to get you out of a death grip. Mort gauge. Mort means death. 
Gauge means grip. Mortgage. He's going to get you out of a mortgage. Why would you even be that obvious and call it a death grip? See, that's when Jesus died on the cross. He said, tell us die, which is the stamp that they stamped when you paid your taxes. Tell us die, paid in full. Your bill is paid. Tell us die is what he said. Paid in full. Okay, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. My peace I, I give you. My peace I leave with you, not as the world gives, but so, that, that he's imparting from heaven to you. This is what the body needs. It doesn't need a fire tunnel. It doesn't need hands. Laid. You, you, would, you would feel the power of God, but see, you would feel what's on me, but can you walk in that tomorrow when I'm gone? You've got to learn to walk in this yourself. So you feel that, but then you need another hit. And then your pipe is bigger the next time too because you've got to get a bigger pipe. you got to flip it. Okay. All right. Everything good? All right. Oh, it's still early. I had a lot of scriptures. Let me see here. All right, so the, the Spirit had asked me to talk about dreams and visions and then un, unexpected, un, un, unrealistic expectations. Okay, so this is what happens, is we think because something happens to someone else that it, that it could or would happen to us. Okay, that is not necessarily true because Jesus didn't even heal people the same way each time he did it. When he talked to people, he, he let the Holy Spirit do what what was the father was doing but it was the mode wasn't always the same i believe this is to out fox not only the evil spirits but also to help people to not expect it a certain way and create some sort of system that he was showing that we have to flow with the spirit which means we may not be doing the same thing again for a while or God may not speak to us another, he, may, he not, may not provide financially for you the same way again. So he may tell you to start controlling what's going out in your finances first, because that's what he did for me. And it, it didn't come in a, in a spiritual way. It came through Consumer Report. I was praying. My brother buys me Consumer Report, and the, the, the heading was like six ways to, to stop money from flowing out of your, your house your, from your energy bill, just fixing your house up. So I just went to Home Depot. It's kind of scary because they knew me on a first name basis, you know, like I, like I worked there. But I went and I, I worked on our house. And I, I sealed everything up. And my electric bill in Phoenix, Arizona, went from like 400 and some dollars a month at the time. Now it'd be, you know, 700. But it went from 400. It was less than half. Okay. And if you add that up over a year, it, it was a lot for a newly married couple. Okay. Then... He started to say this, I want you to take all your per diem money that is for your meals and all the entertainment stuff that Southwest pays you, I want you to put that in an account. And so we put, we, what he did was he had me direct deposit my whole check into Southwest Airlines Credit Union and put it so that it was in savings so that you would have to transfer it to checking and make it really hard to spend money at the time. Now it's too easy because your iPhone will spend it for you while, while you're walking, you know. But the thing it is, is that the Lord started to help me and, Ka and Kathy. And then he showed me this. He said, you don't even touch your principal until, this, until seven years left is when you get to the 50% mark where more goes into principal than into your interest payment. 
So this is the way the Holy Spirit would talk to me. And he used Consumer Report. Okay, but I did all that. So we worked, we paid off our cars, we paid off our credit cards, and it was like fight, fighting a gorilla. It took 10 years. Kathy and I worked all the time for 10 years. But I, did, I chose, I, I can tell you the spot in Phoenix, Arizona, in my backyard. I can show you the spot where God spoke to me. And I said, I, I declared a war on debt. And I don't want to be president, so don't even write me in. I just, I'm just telling you that I made a decision. I went in and I told Kathy, I said, lock and load. It was just me and her. So I would call scheduling and I would tell them, listen, I will fly anything that has wings. I will, I will work any trip that nobody wants. So they started calling. They said, well, we, we can actually give you double time. So for 10 years, I never flew straight time. I always flew time and a half, double time and triple time. And I would always obey them when they said, okay, you're going to be snowed in for four days in Dulles, so I w don't even call us until Thursday. So you couldn't get through anyway, because you know how Southwest is. You saw it. So it, when that stuff melts down, it melts down bad. So when we got to Chicago, they said, you're going one more leg, but just go to the hotel. Don't call us. We'll call you. Well... You know, so I was supposed to be in there two days, and on the third day, get the call, because I got another trip. And I'm already getting double time for doing nothing. I'm sitting in my hotel room, you know. And um, I'm like, I didn't want to tell anybody how good this job was, you know. <laughs> but they forgot about me, so I waited a whole other day, because I'm just being obedient. <laughs> but, man, they were in checkmate, man. So I finally called them because the girls are like, man, we're running out of clothes. We're running out of this. So I said, okay, I'll call them. This is what the scheduler said. I mean, I'm quoting him. Dude, where are you? <laughs> That's what he said. I'm, I'm, I'm right where I was. Name my room in, my, in the hotel, right by the Air and Space Museum, you know. He said, uh. We got planes just sitting at the gate with people on them. We have no crew. Can you make it to the airplane in 30 minutes? I said, well, I got two ladies with three feet of hair. Do you think they're going to be ready in a half hour? And they, because they, they had long hair, you know. He goes, man, I see your point. Okay, so tomorrow, just deadhead. Just deadhead tomorrow. Get a flight. Just show, go to the airport uh, tomorrow and get on a flight. I go, well, we got a problem because I have to start a trip and be in Oklahoma City tomorrow night. And I, they said, well, we're going to have to pull you and pay you double time for that, too. So I said, oh, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so I just did head home. Okay, this started happening for 10 years. And we got out of debt. But I had to do something about it, but it taught me to listen to the Lord, is my point. I started letting the Lord into my finances we, we started sewing. We would, we would see people in the church parking lot. They had bald tires or whatever. We'd just go and say, you got new tires. Here's, here's money for that. Pastor, we would just bless the pastor. We would buy them um, stuff. We would, uh, people that, that uh, we'd just pay for their rent for a month. And um, we, we, we still couldn't pay off our house. It was so hard. And so the Lord sent somebody and said, I'm supposed to pay off your house. And they paid off our house. But it was a process, but my personality had to change. It wasn't somebody initially giving me money or giving me the lottery numbers. It was me working with the Spirit because God was more concerned about my character through all this than just giving me money or giving me this or that or, you know, what's going on now. This is not for me. This is for you. Everything that we're doing is for people. It's not for us. Because we have this already. We have it at home. We, we, can, we talk to ourselves and preach to ourselves. We, we study, you know, we sit around and study and talk and pray. And, um, you know, we're always working. We're always uh, filming. We're always flying somewhere. I'm always filming for kids' shows, flying different airplanes. 
and, and got 10 years worth of, of, of shows filmed. You know, we just need to edit them now and everything. Same with the books, okay? This is what God wants to do in you. It's not spectacular, but it, it is supernatural because God wants to lead you by the still small voice. So the momentum breakers, these evil spirits that are around you, they want to cause you to be off balance. In other words, they want you to feel like you cannot reach some sort of, of balance. They want you always off a little bit. So stuff starts to happen all the time that jostles you. See, on an airplane, the first two years for a flight attendant, is, is they're always trying to reach equilibrium because the airplane is constantly moving. The controls are, are constantly, from the autopilot, are, are trying to keep everything stable, but nothing is stable. If it wasn't for the computers, it would be really rough in a lot of situations, especially when you get up high. So my body and, and flight attendants for the first two years, I would, I would stand up getting up out of a restaurant on my day off, and I would feel like I was moving. I was constantly always feeling like I'm just moving all the time, and I'm standing still. That's because my body was trying to find equilibrium, but the airplane actually doesn't fly in a straight line. It is actually, if you look it up, it's, it's called a Dutch roll situation, where the, especially with swept wings, it's the one wing is always fighting to lead. So straight wings don't do this as much, but swept wings, one is, they're always, it's all, the plane is always oscillating because it's trying to find equilibrium, but with a swept wing, it's good high performance, but it, it doesn't create a straight line. The airplane actually goes like this. It's always wanting, fighting for one wing. It's going like, it's a Dutch roll. And if, with, now with all that they have to document this, Airplanes go in like a three-foot circle or four-foot circle like this all the time. They're always, one wing is wanting to lead, and then it fights, and the other one wants to lead, and the, the, you're, we, you could feel that. Well, in the spirit, that's what's happening with you, because these spirits, you can't see them, but they're jostling you to get you off so that you never feel like you're set on a track. But if you listen to Paul and all the things that he says, he talked as though he was locked in on Christ. He said, I take hold of those things which Christ has taken hold of for me. He said, I'm, I know that, that he is able to keep that which I have given to him. He was, he was always focused. Jesus was always focused. He was very, they were very serious people because of the warfare. Okay, so what we do is we seek entertainment because... We, we, get, we, we just want to opt out for an hour, but th that hour turns into six hours of TV or, or video games or iPhone 14, you know? Because why? Because your mind isn't participating in the warfare, it's spiritual. So your mind is feeling all kinds of emotions because your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions is trying to translate and interpret what you're going through. But it cannot because Paul said when you pray in an unknown tongue, he said your mind is not fruitful. In other words, it doesn't participate because you're speaking to God. It's the same thing with spiritual things in the, in the demonic is that these things are going on. Things are yelling at you. There's all kinds of junk going on. And certain people have a bunch of uh, invisible friends around them. And you can feel it. You can feel the confusion. They, it, it hits you before they get to you. These kind of things get into the churches. They get into organizations. They get into corporations. And they start to shift things around to where... It's really hard for you to go to work. It's for hard for you to go to church. I remember there are churches where Kathy and I would have to pray an hour just to go to church. <laughs> prayer meetings. Go to a prayer meeting. We had to pray an hour just to be built up enough to go and be a standard at that prayer meeting to where it wouldn't diminish. We wanted to be a standard because that fire, the fire of God needed to be in that church. And that's what we were called to do was to help the churches. But we were not to fix them. We were just to be the example and pray from the fire. And so we would just pray from the fire. And we were the, you know, the excessive ones, you know. We were the weird ones. 
But actually, everybody else was. We were just, this, we, God was using us as a standard. And that's what it happens to all of us. We are the standard, but we're going to feel like we're, the, we're messing things up. Well, just that's what happened with Jesus. Everything was fine. Those people that manifested devils in the synagogue, everything was fine until he showed up as a guest speaker. you got to remember that, that Jesus caused things to manifest that were already there. So this is what the Lord had shown me. When Paul was shipwrecked, you got to remember that the prophet Agabus tied a girdle, tied him up and said that, that you will be bound. And it was prophesied, and he was always told, you must appear before Caesar. And he would get jailed and shipwrecked and beat up. It took two years for him to appear before Caesar. So everything went south from that word until it happened. Why? It's because Paul had to testify to the head honcho because of the spiritual warfare about Rome, which is in the end times. The end time spirit is still attached to that whole thing. You got to remember that the book of Revelation talks about the seven hills, which is in Rome. Come on now. Paul was doing spiritual war. He had to appear before Caesar. The angel told him everybody, but everything worked against him. Why did it take two years if it was God's will? But see, my point is he was shipwrecked. He was on the island and he was just going to get firewood, just kind of help out, you know. And on the way back, everything was fine until that serpent that was in there, that viper, when it got close to the fire, it manifested. But see, you got to admit that Paul carried that thing the whole way down the beach with that viper in there. And everything was fine until it got close to the fire. That's what's happening with you. Things are happening because you're hot and, and others are not. And those demons felt comfortable because they had worked the matrix, the system for the area. Jesus had to deal with it. The demons did not want to be sent out of the area because they had worked their way in the Battle Creek. Right. <laughs> and that, this is their place. They don't want to be sent out of the area because they were here before the flood. And so everybody that lives here has to deal with the same entities that are transferred down. And so that's where you have all this stuff, the curses that are transferred down to the third and fourth generation that the Bible talks about. Is it, you're, you're the curse breaker because the curse breaker is inside of you the Holy Spirit is enforcing a blessing now. And wherever you go, correction is automatically going to happen because you don't carry a curse. But the demons know that. So they're going to say, who do you think, who do you, we know who you are. And they're going to say, don't send us out of the area. Yes, you're going. You're leaving right now. And you want to feel torment? I'm going to talk about the blood of Jesus for a little bit. You're going to feel torment. You just, you just, you just have to do this. I hope this has helped you all because it helped, it helped me to understand these things is that the unrealistic expectations is, is that we have formulated in our mind, our soul from others, what, what, we, what, what should we should be expecting. But God has written things about you that are particular to you and to your generation. And the, the, the key to this is, is to, to give to people that can't pay you back and to provide food and, and sustenance to people and let them interpret the love of God by what you do. Amen. Let your faith be seen and let them ask questions because that is true love. Listen, people don't need to be told they're going to hell. Some people are excited about going to hell. There's other people that think that there's no hell because this is hell on earth okay but there is a place called hell and demons are making people feel as though they're in hell but what's really happening is everyone was created in the image of god even the people that are that are satanists even people that are manifesting now in leadership and in government these people were still made in the image of god they're hijacked 
Okay, you have to remember that the manifestation of the evil spirits is at the highest level at the end. This is what this is how the world gets to where it is. It's not the demonic in the spiritual realm. It's when it gets into people. And people carry out the desires of that particular spirit. The higher ups control countries. And so you have these higher ups that we can't take out individually. Body, the whole body has to take them out. We're to trample on serpents and scorpions. The earthbound, the unclean spirits is what Jesus cast out. We are to cast out those devils. We're to drive them out. But they have not gone to torment yet. They have not gone to chains. They, are not going, they have not been sent to hell. They are walking on the earth. They were always here. And for 2,000 years, very few people have riled them up. But the people that rile them up are the ones that give. Think about it. Even in the flesh, even in the government, when you think about everything that happens in countries, when somebody takes authority and gives it back to the people, when they form governments and they give the voice to the people, it's for the people, by the people. Sound familiar? Well, then once those people are the governing and they send people to represent them, well, then if they, if they don't represent you uh, properly, then you just fire them. Right? Okay, so that's how this was all made up at the beginning. It's the voice of the people. It was, it was by the people for the people. So we have certain rights, inalienable rights. And God gave us that ability, okay? What happens is, if you notice, it, that it gets taken away, and then people rise up and they, they say things like Martin Luther King and, and JFK. If you, if you listen, Reagan, if you listen to what they were saying, and in the, the obvious is now, you know, but... When you hear what they're saying, they're wanting to give the power back to the people because it's the people's country. Amen. Okay, It's the same with the body of Christ. It's the body of Christ. It's not the fivefold. It's not the priest. There's only one mediator between God and man. According to the Bible, that's Jesus Christ. So we all can go into the Holy of Holies. We have free access now through the blood. It says that we can enter in to the Holy of Holies, which is only what the priest could do, and that was with blood. So now we all can enter in. So the whole idea was that Jesus Christ gave the power back to the people and, and said, you're my body, I'm the head of the body. I mean, if you want to bring the Bible and, and, and Paul into it. That was the plan that was all represented through all the crowd. So all of you have been given the power over serpents and scorpions, not just your favorite prophet. Even a non-prophet could do it. Right? So, so a mom, a single mom, single, single family, mom or dad with, ch with children, can take authority in their own home and drive out devils and prophesy. But see, it had to come back to this because that's how it started in the first century. This, this whole idea of church was not buildings, it was homes. And people were being persecuted, so they would hide and they would go from home to home and they would hide. And that's how it all started. It wasn't renting buildings. It wasn't TV and all these things, you know that. But see, at the end of the age, God promised that everyone would hear the gospel. So he told Daniel at the end, knowledge shall increase. And the, the trafficking will increase and will go, people will go to and fro at, at a high speed at the end. And the wise ones will, will, will shine like the noonday sun in the last days. The bright and shining ones. That's the sons of God that are going to be revealed. That's all of us. Okay. So these evil spirits know that that's coming, and I'll tell you why. It's because they're looking at our faces, and they're seeing the activity around each of us right now. They're seeing the fire in the heavens. That, that They know that's the cleansing fire. But see, no, I've not heard one person in the last two weeks since it started. It started two weeks ago. Not one person has said it. 
I, I gave people two weeks, a week and a half actually, and I told my staff, I said, not one person is even picking up what's happening, or what's going on with all the prophets. See, they're focused on current events, and the devil's got them. The devil's got them. They're prophesying in the current events. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus was, was interpreting what was happening in the heavens and bringing it to the earth. He wasn't like waiting for something to happen and then say, well, this is what it is. This is, this is when, when, when they said, this is that, what Joel prophesied, it had come to the earth, but it was in the heavenlies before it came. The Holy Spirit was there. That's what's happening now. These evil spirits, the reason why you're feeling what you're feeling is because it is all out shock right now in the spirit. The evil spirits are freaked out. They know. They try to push for the one world agenda. They try to push the timeline. They try to silence people that were giving the voice back to the people in the world. They were because they knew that the people as a whole have the power in agreement. So all of us, if we would agree as touching to any one thing, it would be done for us. So that's what's going on. Let's go to Chick-fil-A. Do you have a Chick-fil-A? Still early, right? Okay, so the evil spirits are nervous. They're nervous because they see what's around the body of Christ. They see what's going on. But what they're nervous about is if any of you would actually get it. That any of you would determine and determine and, and, and think about it and add all the math up that the, the devil's the actual victim. And here's the only way that I can deal with being down here is that I had to realize that someday I'm going to be back before the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know I make it because I was already there. He already told me, well done. I have my reward. I didn't even get to see my mansion. I could care less. I got to see his smile. He said, you did it, Kevin. You've done everything I've asked you to do. He said, but you can, can, can you go back? It'll just be for a short time. He said, and tell everybody. So I, I said, okay, I, I, but I want fruit that lasts. In other words, I don't want it to leak out of the people. I want them to be permanently changed. I said, I don't want to have to lay hands on people. I don't want to have to do all that circus stuff. I said, you know, I'm not saying that that's not biblical. What I'm saying is we got dependent upon the fivefold and people touching you and you giving money to get their anointing and all this weird stuff. And I'm thinking, you know what? Jesus never took an offering. People were giving in to him. That's why we have partnership. It's because the partners actually pay for everything. It, it's not determined by the book table or the offerings. It's partnership. There were people giving into that bag for Jesus. And Judas was taking from it, but there were people giving into it secretly. And that's what happens every month for us. Okay, this has to start happening for you. The supply, he's going to supply you with, with seed. He's going to supply, as, as a sower, you're going to be able to do what Paul said for others. Not only will you have enough for yourself, but you'll have enough to help others. That's the whole idea here. So if you, if you had the goal to be rich, you're going to be, that's unrealistic expectation if you're going to give to get rich. Because the reason you give is because you love God. But if you give, He does reward you. But then if it, if it starts a supply flow, then He is trusting you to keep the flow going out. So would you? the whole idea about all the parables and everything was not, I mean, it is hard for a rich man to get to heaven, but Jesus said with, with people, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. So he's talking about the rich man. He said, it's hard. Why is it hard? Because we don't want to keep it flowing. We're in a survival mode. But if you can be trusted and start helping others, God will trust you. Amen. So you all, the same with your health. You have to stay healthy. But this is the other thing, is you go to the doctors, and the doctors say, well, we're going to try this. If it doesn't work, we're going to try this. And, and I... You know, and it says it right there on the door, practice. And it's like, why do you want people practicing on you? 
you know, I'm not, I'm, you know, whenever you fix this in a couple years, like with the recent things, it's five years, why, why'd they rush it? It's supposed to be five years. So when you're done practicing, that's why we, we all agree, like when, when, a, um, when a, a, new, a new upgrade comes, we wait a, c a couple weeks. Because, you know, you all are going to call and complain. And then I'm going to get, I'm get the, uh, the right version, the one that you guys all complained about and get it right. And then it's going to work on my phone or whatever, you know. You, 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 have to, you have to discern what the Spirit's saying to you. And that is, is that there are, there are so much available that you can do yourself. And when I did stuff naturally, my doctor said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm taking this, this, and this. He starts typing it into his computer. He goes, okay. He says, you want to, I can actually give you, get it so you have a prescription. I go, well, I'm getting it on Amazon. He goes, I don't care. The, the health companies, some, some of them take this stuff. If it's working, it's bringing your blood pressure down or whatever. He said, you don't need, he said, you don't need to take any of this stuff. If you're doing it, it works. So then I started to realize that the Spirit of God was leading me in certain directions. And and it wasn't the thing that I thought. It wasn't the expectation I thought. The mode was different. And sometimes in order to get something to me, I had to let something go. I had to let something go because it was occupying the place that God had something else for. You got it? Okay, if you, if you can tolerate me for 15 more minutes, I want to talk about how these evil spirits affect your personality. Okay, because the whole idea, it, the argument that I'm not going to get into is if a Christian can have a demon. Because a Christian can't have a demon, but a demon can have a Christian. Because it all has to do with domain. It has to do with proximity. They, 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 they work on influence. So they, a, a demon would not want to live inside of you if you were red hot. Right. But there are parts of you that are not of God. Now, your spirit is born again. So the Holy Spirit's in there. You're a new creature in Christ. And that new creation, that new creature, demons can't stand being around you. If you're born again, you are not going to get along with demons. Okay? They're not going to get along with you. However, the, the soul needs, according to Paul in chapter 12 of Romans, needs to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That The soul needs to be transformed. It needs it's not saved like your spirit's saved. And your body needs, according to him, he said he, he, he disciplined his body daily so that after preaching Christ, he wouldn't be considered a castaway by being body ruled, would actually get him out of the race as an apostle. He said that he could be disqualified by being body ruled. Okay, so we can also be soul ruled. Soul ruled is when we are led by our emotions and by our mind all the time instead of checking out with our spirit. So you can be led by the spirit, but you also have to allow your mind to be transformed so that it starts to think in the same framework as your spirit. Then they agree. Your body just needs to be told, this is what we're going to do. But you have to do that. It's not going to do the right thing, and your mind is not going to think the right thing if you don't allow it to have structure from the framework of the Word of God, which is what Paul said in, in Romans 12. Okay, with that, all that being said, if people would just do that, which you can do at home, and, and stop making your pastor or someone else do this for you. This has been the problem, is that you, you think that you're paying somebody to do this for you. And a pastor is not called to do that. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me to the still waters and to the green pastures. But it doesn't say he pushes my face into the grass and makes me eat. And he doesn't, put, doesn't pour water down my throat. He leads me there to the good water, to the good grass. But he can't make you eat or she. You know, that always, I always do that just to upset everybody. <laughs> because, you know, women, they, they could have the Son of God and, and carry him for nine months, but they can't be a pastor, I guess, so can't be a minister. It's like, but they can carry Jesus and feed him and 
You know, I mean, it's just so weird. Yeah. And, and, they'll the, and then these people that are against it, they'll take your, the women's money in the offering. Right. <laughs> so they'll, t they'll take your money. And, and actually, the denomination I was in, they would send the women to the Amazon where the cannibals were. That they were allowed to be a missionary. They just couldn't be a pastor in the United States. So they could be somebody's dinner. Oh, I'm serious. You guys, where, where you been? So women can prophesy. They can be used in the gifts of the Spirit. And they can give in the offering. And they can carry, carry a man of God in their womb or a woman of God in their womb. But they can't be one. It's just, it's just ridiculous to me. Okay. Evil spirits make issues out of things so that it locks you out of what's really going on. So the evil spirits cause controversy so that now, you know, Pluto used to be a planet and now he's not and then he's back again, I guess. And, and then, you know, the earth was flat, then we found out it was round and now it's back flat as a pizza again. <laughs> and, you know, we've been, we've been hoodwinked about all this stuff. Okay, it's like, yeah, but I know people that flew the whole way around the world in classified airplanes. They did it in one stop. And it's round. <laughs> it didn't flip and have like pineapple and anchovies on one side and pepperoni and cheese on one side. You know, it wasn't as flat as a pizza. But see, what I'm saying is this, is everybody argues about the Trinity. And now, now people ask you, when they baptized you in water, did they do it in the name of Jesus or, or the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? I'm like, well, I was down underneath there gasping for air. I don't know what they said. <laughs> All I know is something happened to me when I got, when I got baptized. Because the sprinkling just didn't do it for me. I can't understand that. I can't understand what that water started bubbling under the power of God. When he put me under, the, the water started bubbling like it was 7-Up. Or Sprite, you know, whatever one you like. Hopefully it was sugar-free. But it was bubbling. And I came up speaking in tongues. Okay, but it was just, you know, I'm thinking, I don't need to do this. I accepted the Lord, the Spirit of God's inside of me, and the Holy, Holy Spirit kept saying, you need to do a public confession, get up there and confess, and then you need to be water baptized in front of everybody. And so I'm like, okay, you know what, I'll do it. I could, I, 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 I missed, I would have missed it's supernatural. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. I don't know why you have to confess with your mouth what you believe in your heart, and then you're saved. I don't know why you have to believe in your heart and say with your mouth, and a mountain will be removed. I don't understand any of that, except now I see why, is that it's all warfare. Amen. It's all warfare. It's a placement on a chessboard where God always wins, and He's, you, he's using you. And wherever you are on the earth, you're being rough with these principalities and powers. You're being rough with them by being where you are. See, when you've done everything to stand, you just stand. You're defending the faith. You're not obtaining faith. You're defending what you already have. That's why those, those weapons are there. They're defensive weapons because you already have it. You're not trying to get faith. Come on now. Jesus said if you have it the size of a mustard seed, now, I can eat a whole bag of mustard seeds. Where, where, where would that get me, you know? I just need one. What, what, you know, at what point do we start to think, what was the Lord trying to tell us? I'll tell you, you just need one of them to, to take root and produce. Some of those mustard uh, plants were 15 feet tall. It was it, actually, when you look at the size of the seed and what you get out of it, that's what the Lord was saying. Is based on the size of the seed and what comes from that, is exponential. When you, when you think about a, a, a uh, shock of wheat, if you talk about just one, one sprout, it has two heads, maybe three. Each is 32 seeds. You plant one seed and one, you take one stalk and you get 32 times three from one seed. And you don't eat that, you plant that. And you do that for three years, you have a complete field. It's so exponential, the return. That's what the Lord was trying to say. 
pressed down, shaken together. He was trying to show you that the 30, 60, and 100 fold, not multiplied, fold, exponential, is that you take one seed of the Word of God and you plant it. And, and in three to four years, it's like when we had our first day, we, Satan fought us so much to just start the school. On the first day, we had 600, 600 students sign up. And it was a thousand a month from then on for the, for the last three or four years. It's been four years almost. It's been four years actually, right? But those, all of you students, you, you get planted and then it, it is exponential the next year. That the influence that you all have by just praying in the spirit, just waking up and saying yes to where the devil goes, yes for what? Oh, you're going to find out. No, no, that's the way I talk to him. You, you just wait and see. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm tight-lipped about it. <laughs> kind of tight-lipped about it. So, you know, you'll find out soon enough. And then you're like. <laughs> so you know you're going to make it. You're going to be in heaven. You're going to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, because you are going to do what's in your heart you're going to live from your heart. So each day now, if you know you're going to make it to heaven and you know that, that down here you have the Holy Spirit and you have the Word of God, then what you do every day is you, you work with that in mind, knowing that you've already won. And then what does it matter? Just go reckless abandonment toward God and just, just, just do all the things as though it's your last day. And that's what I do. Like when I lay down tonight, I have nothing left in me. I have done everything. I walked away from you and I know that if I never get to preach again, that I have done everything I can do for Jesus. Everything. I make sure all the records, everything is set. Everything is ready because I might not have another chance because I'm already on extra credit. I'm not even supposed to be here. And he gave me a second chance to do it right. And I want you to do it right. I don't want you to be disappointed on that day when you find out that you could have done so much more for the Lord. All it takes, all it takes is doing something for someone and do it in secret and do it so that it costs you, but do it for somebody that can't pay you back. It just, it just a can of food. It could be anything. Just bless somebody. And watch what happens to your finances. And I appreciate it, everybody. Trust me, this ministry is run by every person. That Everybody's warrior now. It's not just me. But I believe in this. Kathy believed we did this when we didn't have anybody giving. And we would do it even if we didn't have anybody giving. But we cannot do it unless there are people who are called to do this and help us. And, but I want you all to turn, just like the, the disciples, they turned outward and they became apostles. Just like that. Without a printer to print out their certificate. No invitations, no books written. They were writing letters. They didn't know they were going to be published. They didn't have a degree. They didn't have anything that we have today. And this is how God sees you as being faithful. You do, there's something inside of you that God is telling you to do. You need to do that. Yes. Yes. Amen? Amen? Okay, so your personality may not be really you. And that's why, you know, I was saying about Elaine showing up late. Where's Elaine? Oh, that's Elaine. It's like, well, no, it's not Elaine. That is not Elaine. Elaine has already knows that she's supposed to be here at this time. She's agreed to it. And there are other people and other things that are going on that are hit accountable. Okay, so if a person is not able to carry out what they have committed to, then they're no, in heaven, you're no different. You, who you are as a person is no different than your word. Amen. And I mean that. I mean, when you meet somebody, there is no difference between them and their personality and their word. When you meet God, there's no difference between him and his word. I mean, whatever he, he says is who he is. So when he says something, 
We trust him. We call it faith down here. But what it is, is that we know that his integrity, who he is as a person, stands behind what he said. He, it's impossible for him to lie. It's impossible for him to renege on what he put inside of you. Okay, so what you need to do is concentrate on what the Spirit is saying to you and battle against the evil spirits who are going to be contrary. That's why Timothy was told, wage war with the prophecies that I have given you, that you've received. Paul had given him prophecies. They had not come to pass. He said, wage war with them. Well, if if they were prophecies and they were supposed to come to pass, then Paul wouldn't have had to say anything. But obviously, in this New Testament, we have to take the Word of God and we have to wage war with it. So any personal prophecy, I would just see through what has already been spoken over you. I would wage war with that. Like Paul told Timothy, he said, fan in the flame the gift that was given to you by the laying on of, of hands. Okay, it must have been fire at one time, but it was just coals. And Paul was saying, you got to fan it into flame. So that was not God's will that it went to coals and it needed to be fanned. But Paul, Paul was telling Timothy, you got to fan it into a flame again. Okay, that, that is for all of us. The Spirit is telling us to do that. We need to stir ourselves up. It's not, it's not going to come to pass just because it was spoken over you. The gift that's in you is not going to stay afire just because God had somebody lay hands on you. It has to be fanned. There is something that needs to be done by all of us. Okay? All right. I got one minute. Oh, man. Okay. So what you, what you really need is you need to be exposed to the Word of God, which is the will of God, which is the personality of God. And then what it does is starts to change your mind. It starts to change the way you process things so that you don't have unrealistic expectations. So they took, you know, it was just Palm Sunday. You know, they, they expected Jesus to be the Messiah, but they saw him as a king that would actually take over and push Rome out. So they saw him as a leader in the physical, and when he rode down there, it was to fulfill the prophecies that he would ride on a donkey and that he would establish his kingdom. So they thought that he was going to announce that day, not that he was going to even run for office. He was just going to put himself in office, and it didn't happen. If you notice the next day, as you've heard me say every night this week, is the next day in your Bible, just one page, they went to throw him over the hill to kill him. Why? Because it was another failed coup, which had happened a lot. There were people being crucified. In Jesus' day, there were people hanging on crosses. It wasn't just him. They were doing, the Romans were doing this all the time. Okay? So that, that is when Judas turned is when he saw that Jesus was not going to do what he said, unrealistic expectations. Why? Because they weren't interpreting what was going on in the spirit realm. They were looking and trying to figure out what was happening in the spirit realm based on what was happening in the physical. But see, some things you need to call into this realm. Jesus said when you pray, pray that God's will would be done on the earth as it is in heaven, that his kingdom would come, that his will would be done on the earth as it already is, actually is what it says. Already is? Well, of course. So I feel the authority of God. I hear crunching under my feet when I walk because I'm trampling on serpents and scorpions. It's just a common thing. So I don't take it seriously in the sense of I don't let drama, when people act up, you can't like take that personally to the place where it shifts you because that is just something that was always there. You, when you're mistreated, it, uh, Jesus said, dance with joy. Be exceedingly happy that you were counted because great is our reward. The demons are upset because you're on the ground. They see you as the body of Christ. You're the authority now in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Okay. This, the Spirit is so strong in here 
you need to allow him to start working his way into you. You need to like allow the Holy Spirit to start to minister to you because you, you, a lot of you have been traumatized. I know I have. I have, I, I have learned not to interpret the way people treat each other as being whether I'm right or wrong. You have to live by the truth. You have to, you have to know that you can do everything you can for your kids and they can still turn out bad. The reason why is, is that you have to take it another step. It's not just, it's, it's not just what you do at home. You have to do spiritual warfare, and then you have to train them that there are an, there's another realm where, where these entities hate people. They do not want your children to grow up and fulfill their books, their destinies. So evil spirits are going to work. The, the children need to know. They need to know their authority. They're just as much in the body of Christ as you are. And, and I think we're keeping the kids out. All right, so the, bo- the bonus story for tonight is, is I, I, I remember what the Lord had asked me to share. Some of you have heard this, but the bonus story is this. When I was in Bible college, I was fasting and praying, and I was reading the book of Isaiah. I didn't want to read the book of Isaiah. I didn't understand the book of Isaiah. I still don't understand the book of Isaiah completely. <laughs> but I was told to read the book of Isaiah... I took off. I took off from work. I was I was armed security. I took off for two weeks. I fasted and prayed for two weeks. I didn't I didn't leave my room. I just prayed in. And then I read Isaiah, and and the Lord says, "No, you're going to read it out loud, for eight hours a day for two weeks." So I would just go through all 66 chapters, and I would read them over and over again, and at a certain point. I was on the third floor in the dorms at Bible school, and they didn't even believe in this stuff here. But I, they didn't even believe in the supernatural. It was on paper, you know. <laughs> I'm reading Isaiah, and as I'm reading it in English, I see the Bible in front of me, And all of a sudden, I started to feel like I was getting further away from the Bible. You know, not not in a bad way, doctrinally. I'm not talking distance-wise. My spirit started to go up. And I'm reading the Bible, and it's coming out in another language. And I'm going further, further away. And then all of a sudden, I'm translated to the fairgrounds. in the city, but it's in a bad part of town and there's no fair going on. There's no carnival, there's nothing. I guess it was in Washington at the time, but there was nothing going on. And I'm like, this is not good. I can still hear myself in the dorm reading Isaiah, but I'm, I'm at the fairgrounds. And I saw this man in a plaid shirt and jeans coming along the fence. And the Lord said, I want you to share with him about my spirit. And all of a sudden, as soon as he said that, I got a good look at the guy. He was coming right at me really fast. And I was taken back into my room. And as soon as I got back into my body, it went back to English. And I'm still picking up on the chapter I was reading. And the Lord said, no, go do it. And I'm like, I was just there. (laughs) So he made me walk (laughs) to that place. And I stood there. And sure enough, nobody be out there. But this guy in this plaid shirt, just like hers, and walking down. And I just joined up and he got nervous. Because I'm from Pittsburgh, and you don't just come up on people like that. I said, sir, i got to talk to you. I said, the Lord has sent me. I mean, I'm fasting. I'm fasting and praying. I don't, I'm completely out of my mind. 
And I'm a prophet now. And I mean, I really was. And he goes, the Lord has, has told me to join up with you and tell you that the Holy Spirit is real. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is real. And I want to give you instruction on how to be filled with the Spirit. And he stops. He goes, you're an angel. I go, no, my name's Kevin. He goes, no, 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 what's your real name? It's some, you know, Gabriel thing or whatever, you know. And I said, no, it's, I, I'm, I'm Kevin. I, I live right over there. He goes, I'm from Kansas City. This was Springfield, Missouri. I'm from Kansas City. I'm here on business. He said, um, I just got out of my class for the day, and I'm in that hotel over there. And my neighbor has been bothering me about getting filled with the Spirit, but I, my church does not believe in it. It's of the devil, they told me. And so, but in my heart, I'm a Christian, and I, I really feel that the Holy Spirit is still real like he was in the Bible. And I was taking this walk, and I was asking God to give me a sign that what my neighbor is telling me is true about the Holy Spirit. And you walk up. Yeah. So we walked to his hotel room, and I said, listen, you know, I... I, I don't have this book with me, but I have a book on the Holy Spirit. I will, if you give me your, your business card, I will send you this book in the mail. Okay, so I walked back, went to bed, got up the next day. I was doing the same thing in Isaiah. And the Lord said to me, I want you to go to the high school, which is even further away. And I saw myself in the middle of the parking lot at midnight standing there and the Lord said to me take that book with you so he was leaving in the morning which was th that morning already gone but there was a storm and I walked the whole way there in the dark with that book in my back pocket and I stood there and the police came and they go what are you doing I go as soon as I find out I will let you know <laughs> Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm waiting for somebody, which was the true truth, you know. They go, well, you know, this at night, you're, you're not really supposed to be here. You know, just make it quick. Yeah, I go, yeah, I'm working on that, you know. <laughs> anyway, a uh, car pulls up again. I thought it was the police again. It was that guy. He has flight had canceled. He was back out driving around in his rental car. And he, he goes, no, I know you're an angel. I heard him yell out the window, now I know you're an angel. <laughs> and I pulled that book out and I handed it to him. And I said, this is to show you. There's no way I could have known I'd seen that guy. I'd see that guy. I handed him the book so I saved myself, you know, the, the postage. <laughs> but what that did was that sealed up another person. It, it helped another person. It was like a biblical story that happened to Philip. I got translated. I saw the future and then I played it out. And the Lord said to me during that time, because I kept fasting because I wanted it to happen again. Instead, I just lost my hair. But I, I wanted another, I wanted an, that to happen all the time. I'll get you to laugh somehow. And this is what the Lord said. He said, Kevin, I could come and get you like I did and take you and teach you for an hour and then bring you back to your room and bring you back 10 minutes before I came and got you. And you would have to watch 10 minutes play out again because I brought you back too early from when I came and got you. I go, can you repeat that? <laughs> he said, I could change your past without even getting off my throne. He said, I can take care of things for you and not even get up. I said, how, is, how, does, how does that happen? And so he did that for me, which leads me to your second bonus story, if you want to hear it. Is, is, was when I was with the airline, I, I, was, I was flying all the time, and I've, I borrowed money from the bank to pay my bills because when I first got hired, I, was, I, was, I, was, I just got out of college, and I had all these bills, and I, you, know, you don't get paid for... A month with the airline so 
I had gotten a can. Remember Joe Weeder protein powder? You remember Joe Weeder? Yeah. I got a can of uh, weight gain, for the four pound can. And that's what I lived off of on my trips. I would mix it with water. I had no money, but I got a job. But I borrowed money, but it was interest free if I paid it off by a certain date. So I had to be able to transfer that money into the account by this time on that day. Well, I went out on my trip and forgot about it. And, you know, back then you did, you know, you were really rich if you had a flip phone, you know, or one of those big brick ones, you know, with a, looks like a, you came out of an army helicopter with that big the antenna top. You carry that thing around. I mean, you're overweight, you know, your luggage is overweight. So I didn't have, I totally forgot. So when I got home, it was two weeks later, I remembered that I was supposed to transfer that money. I, I got the money when I got my check and I was going to transfer it over and I forgot to. And so I called the bank and I was not cocky. I was like, please have mercy on me because I don't want to pay, you know, 18% interest or something, you know, and um, which isn't bad compared to today. But anyway, I'm just, I'm just joking. But I, I, um, you guys, I'm from Pittsburgh. I have a real sense, weird sense of humor. You guys got to get used to it. Yuns, <laughs> yuns, all of you. You got to get used to it. You got to start laughing at yourself. You got to, you got to, you got to loosen up a little bit because we got to last through this. I mean, there's some really freaky people in charge right now. We need to, we need to loosen up, man. We need to loosen up. Okay, so this is what happened. I called the bank, and um, I said, "Listen, I messed up." And I said, but I said, is there any way that this one time, you know, because if you look at my account, it's in my, you know, and I need to transfer it over to this loan. But back then you couldn't do it because there was no computers. You know, the computers were at NASA, you know, you didn't have like a, you know, you couldn't just like get online and transfer stuff. You couldn't get online unless you're just playing a video game. And it was Antari. It was Antari 64, you know, it was like Pac-Man, you know. So she said, well, let me check. She goes, let, let's just see what you got here. And she goes, well, Mr. Zadai, she said, um, I mean, I could get authorization, but she said, it shows right here at 10 a.m. on um, two weeks ago on Tuesday, you called in and you transferred it. I'm like, okay, can you send me a receipt? <laughs> and she the mail. And I did not do that. And so I, I said, Lord, what just happened? He goes, I knew that you would pray. I knew that you would repent. And I knew that this would happen. So on credit, I paid it off for you on credit. So he, he did that knowing that two weeks later, I would remember it, repent and ask for a miracle. So he actually paid it off that day on credit. He fixed my past. Do you get it? I don't know if you get it, but he was by his grace. He had already done it without my knowledge, which leads me to my third story. Cause you guys are so hungry. You want another bonus? Story? You, you all can leave whenever you want. My staff can leave. Just turn the lights off. When you... <laughs> Kathy and I, there were times when we worked the 10 years to get out of debt. I, we worked all the time. Kathy was cutting hair. She had a hair salon business and I was out flying all the time. We saw each other um, once a week. We talked on the phone and prayed in the spirit over the phone. Our, our bills were four or $500 a month for phone bills because we just pray together. But we were just happy. We found each other. We got married and we're, we're happy that we're working towards getting out of debt. And, you know, we just had scorpions in our yard. We had no, no kids, no animals, just tarantulas and scorpions in Phoenix, Arizona. And then now we have alligators in our yard in New Orleans. But we, we were just happy. But we, we, I, would, I would pray with her on the phone. But we were, we were completely, completely out all the time. But there were times, like there was one time that I came home and I could not find my keys. Uh -oh. I fixed that problem because I put a stuffed animal on our keys now. <laughs> but 
we looked for those keys everywhere, and then it had dawned on us that we should pray. Yeah. Well, I pr we prayed, and those keys dropped in the middle of a glass table that had nothing on it. And then, because we worked so much, when we were home, I wasn't feeling well. Because all of you would come on my airplane and sneeze on me. <laughs> so I didn't feel good, and I was just going to call in sick. Because my ears were plugged up, and you can't fly with your ears plugged up. And it's just not allowed. So um, I was going to call in, and we're sitting there in bed, reading, reading, and... This man walks in to our room and comes up. It's an angel, and he walks over, and he just touches me right here where these freckles are. Just touches me, and then turns around and walks out. And when he did, sickness just like like a like somebody had kicked that thing out. It just left my body, and I I felt like I couldn't feel my bed anymore. I was completely healed, but I was I was so. I feel like what I feel in this room right now. I feel the power of God. And, and I gasp, and the, and the angel turned around and goes, that's how easy it is to be healed. I go, I don't even believe that angels can heal. It's, a, it's against, you know, I didn't even believe that angels could heal. It didn't matter. It wasn't my faith. Yeah, you receive it? Because what's happening in our bodies now doesn't have to continue. There were times where our airplanes, we were on a Southwest, they would lose an engine. We would lose, de we would lose pressure. We would lose a cabin. We'd have the mass come down. We had fire coming out of an engine. We had all this stuff. We were caught, one time we were caught in um, an ice slip in New York, we were caught in wind shear, and the, the pilot had the airplane completely firewalled. The airspeed was 312 knots. We were sideways coming down the runway, and he could not climb. At 312 knots, we were sideways. You could see the tower that's supposed to be on the wing. It was, he was that much messed up with the wind going this way down the runway. He had a firewall. He was, we were caught in wind shear. The G-forces were so strong that I couldn't even lift my arms, as, as, and I was a flight attendant at the time, and it bent the airplane. It literally, when we went, we went back to Baltimore, they took the airplane and it disappeared, and I think it's in a museum. <laughs> I have gone through situations where it looked like things were going to be really bad. And nobody wants to talk about these things. But I'm going to tell you that what, what happens in those things, as I realized, is the Lord showed me the secret to this life. Is He said, I know everything. He said, I do. And he said, don't you think that because of the inspections that are done every night, and every week and every month, A, B, C, D checks. There are checks that are done every night, and there's done every week, every month. I knew the mechanics in Phoenix. He said, when you bid your schedule, it literally has the tail numbers for the next month that you're going to be on of every airplane. I already know the crew I'm going to fly with. I know the city pairs. I know everything. He said, don't you think I know that too? And don't you think I can have that mechanic find anything? He said, because that, there, you'll not be on an airplane that goes down. Because, because I know ahead of time, and you can change it. So you agree with me, and then that mechanic finds it, or whatever situation, it's 30 days in advance. So when things would happen to me, I mean, I, I was told... You know, I need you to go back and verify that the air, that, that engine two is on fire because we're having an indica indication that it's not gone out. 
and we're going back around, but I need you to go back there and just verify that there's no flames coming out the back. I'm like, no, you do it. You know, I'm like, I'm a flight attendant, you know, I'm not going back there, but I did. I went back there and, and um, so the gentleman was there. He's got a death grip on the seat in front of him and he's white, white, uh, I mean, really white, like no blood white. And he's gripped and he's staring straight ahead. And I go, I could just see some smoke coming out, but no flame. I go, sir, was that engine on fire a minute ago? And he just, he wouldn't answer me. And I said, sir, he goes, he turns to me, he goes, big fire, <laughs> lots of fire, very bad. And then he turns and stays straight again. <laughs> Thank you. And those pilots were able with one engine just to turn that thing around and we just landed pretty much on the same run where we took off on. And, but the thing of it was, is that I've been through situations in all kinds of scenarios with a lot of different things. And this is what I've learned is the devil always over, he's always messed up. He oversteps his boundaries. He overplays. And I feel I have to tell you this because I feel like God lets him. But that judgment is coming. And what I've found is, is that I don't like to talk about conversations I've heard. Cast a lot out, had a lot of things happen. But I want to tell you, the thing that they are really upset about is their pending judgment. And when you mention the blood of Jesus, they freak out. They freak out about the blood because they said, that, that the blood defeated us. They, t they tell you that. They also say this, when you mention the name of Jesus, don't mention his name. It's very powerful. They all say that. They say, stop mentioning that name. You're hurting us. I'm like, okay, anything else? Anything else? But I don't like to quote the devil because it's not karaoke night for the devil. He's not getting the mic. It's not open mic night. But what I'm telling you is, is that I want to tell you this, that my perspective of, of having what happened to me happen and then being here tonight, being told to do this and, be, and you here is this, is that I feel like the devil is allowed to overplay his hand so that we are going to see a display Amen. of God's glory. Okay. Yes which means that we have to stay in our track and not allow ourselves to become uh, offended or to become critical, to stay soft before the Lord and allow him to use you. Because there's a lot of people out there that are ready to hear about Jesus Christ. Okay, let's all stand. Thanks for this story time. This was really fun. Yeah, this is fun. This is, this, is, this is the fellowship that we're supposed to have. This is my dream at Warrior Notes. This is what I want rooms of people like this all over the world that we can just meet. And, and I'm coming back. I want to establish a work here. What I need is I need help. I need help. I need help because we usually have, we need about a thousand people wherever we go church and so we and we need you know, all you students uh, everybody uh, that's able to um, Ryan, I know Ryan's going to be talking to some of you we need to figure this out okay but just remember tomorrow morning when you wake up the power that you feel right now is going to be on you it will be on you tomorrow morning and you'll be will stay with you because this is permanent this was, all knew it and understood it, but man got, made it hard when it wasn't meant to be that way. We have to become children again in order to enter in. All of thing, that the, the enemy is going to find out how much he's going to have to suffer. Amen. Okay, do we all agree? That the enemy is going to find out how much he's going to suffer for what he's done. If he has touched you in your body, in your mind, in your finances, in your relationships, 
He is going to pay. Amen. So I'm going to pray for you. You don't need to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to beat the living daylights out of the devil for you. Okay? All right. But then what I want you to do is tomorrow morning when you wake up and you feel the presence of God like you do now, I want you to thank him and I want you to yield to him. And I want you to say that uh, this is what I want you to say. This is permanent. Okay? Tomorrow morning when you wake up, I want you to realize that this doesn't go away. Because who you are can't go away. You can't stop being who you are. This is who you are. What you feel in this room is what's supposed to be felt all over the world by every believer. But we need each other. It took us getting into a room and hearing the word of God and agreeing to let the devil just vacate. There, there's no devils in here. This is a holy room with holy people. All right, you ready? I'm going I'm to I'm show you. I'm going to show you this is what you're going to do. Father, I just thank you so much. All of our family here is going to receive right now. I'm going to pray over them in the name of Jesus. I come to you, Father, and I break the power of the devil over every single person. I break trauma. I break rejection. All lying devils. Every lying spirit that is operating in any person's life in this room or in their extended family, I break that power right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing. I command healing to come. I command every devil of infirmity to leave in Jesus' name. And I command you, Satan, to let go of God's people right now. Thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit is able to be uh, everything to each person. And, and as you get delivered, just let it go. As you feel things leaving, just let it go. Just let it go. Let go. Forgive. Let God take care of your case. He's not going to let them get away with it. You forgive. Release the case to God. Let him take care of those people. Healing is coming right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we intercede right now for relationships. I command every evil spirit to let go of the children in, that are represented in, these, in this room. Every family member that has a child that is wayward right now. I command you, Satan, to let go of those children. And angels of the Lord, you go forth and bring them back in the name of Jesus. Del the Lord says that deliverance has come to your house. Deliverance has come to your house. I break every, every, every spirit that is causing debt, that is causing financial difficulty. I break every power that is, is, is a not allowing the finances to f freely flow. I command you, evil spirits, to let go now in the name of Jesus. Father, by your Holy Spirit, communicate with each person in this room right now at an intimate level so that they can say, it seems good to me and the Holy Spirit. And we're going we're gonna to move, we're going to live and have our being in, in you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Honey, come over here. Go ahead. So I know that um, it says that just like we don't have to understand why God says that we need to believe in our heart and say with our mouth, it doesn't make sense. It says that he also chose the foolishness of preaching. So this whole thing where we preach the word, people hear the word, they believe in their heart, and they say with their mouth, I know that the harvesting angels are here tonight. There's people crying out to know, okay, I feel God. I know he's here. How do I, how do I make that connection? So it's so easy. And so we're just going to, this is going to be marked forever in eternity this yes. day. Jesus is coming back. Yes. And we get to be a part of somebody coming to know him. And so we're just going to pray this together. We're just going to, so if you don't know Jesus, or you want to make sure that you know Jesus and that you're going to heaven, just pray this with us. Say, Father, I thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. Forgive me of my sins. I receive you as my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Let me fulfill every... Let me fulfill... Everything you've planned for me. And stand before you with 
in joy at the end of my life. All right. Amen. All right. So for everyone who prayed that prayer, Lord, we pray that they will stand before you. They will fulfill their days and walk in all the call. And now there's also people in this room in the sound of our voice that want to be filled with the Holy Spirit and fire and speak in other tongues who have not been released yet. So if that's you, just raise your hand. Okay, I see some hands. And so we're going to, we're going to, it's easy right now in this atmosphere. Is there anything I can be doing different, Anna Banas? Am I okay? Just a little, little farther away. Yeah. A little bit farther away. Okay. All right. So it's going to be easy to get filled with the Holy Spirit tonight. Okay. And if you're already filled, you want fresh fire. Okay. So we're going to, um, we're going to pray for those, for everybody who wants to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So just pray with me, okay? And then we're going to get released because we all need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need that in this day. And um, hallelujah. Let's just pray a little bit. Okay, now we're going to pray with our brothers and sisters that want to be filled. So we'll just, let's all pray together. Say, Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for making the way. Thank you, Lord, for sending the Holy Spirit. I receive the Holy Spirit. Baptize me now with the Holy Spirit and fire. I pray in new tongues. I release my tongue. And I pray now. And let's just all pray. Just release uh, any sound that the Holy Spirit's giving you. It says, they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So you do the speaking and the Spirit gives you the utterance. La borra Hallelujah. 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 Everybody put your hand on your belly, like where your belly button is. Where it says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. So we thank you for fresh fire for everybody in here, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so that's all of you who raised your hand. Let me see that wanted to be filled tonight. Okay, did you feel like you got released? Okay, praise the Lord. So, let's pray a little bit more. And I know there's many more of you. So just, um, Kevin and I have many um, like videos and things out there where we pray in the spirit. You know, you can Google um, Kenneth E. Hagen praying in tongues and there's just, just don't let the river stop. Let the river keep flowing, okay? Because it builds you up in your faith, and then you're going to be able to um, be always ready, more ready to um, have that, that fresh flow for people around you, okay? So we love you guys so much. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Pastor Ryan's going to close us out here. And, um, yeah, you're not forgotten. You know, you said that word last night. And that has been coming up in me, too, that God has, even if you're a believer, sometimes you can feel like you're, you're not forgotten. And um, keep your eyes off man. It says, for the fear of man is a snare, but he that trusts in the Lord will be kept safe. It's in Jeremiah 17. Okay, so God bless you all. Here's Pastor Ryan.